Welcome to the Clear Shots Podcast with Seth Skinner and Jake Jones. Hey guys, it's Seth from Clear Shots. Today's episode is number 95. It's just us, so please enjoy. Shit, these guys are good. Welcome to the Clear Shots Podcast. My name is Seth Human Animal Hybrid Skinner. My name is my name is Jake. Two thousand calories an hour, Jones. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't say an hour, but in an hour, <laughs> it was within per, an hour. Per hour, two thousand calorie per hour. Yeah. Well, I would dispute that, but I don't know enough about calories to dispute it. I guess. That's a shit ton of calories. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of calories. That's forty eight thousand calories in I don't a know day. If, I don't know if they recommend that. Do they? Do doctors recommend that? Is you, there like, a limit? Like, is there they, like, a, is, is there, there a, a caloric intake that just immediately kills you? Well, is uh, there like an amount that like they're not allowed to serve you? Well, I guess they don't know how many people are eating it, right? So you could get like five people's worth. And just eat all of it yourself. Have you ever seen 600 pound life? Because that shit's insane. I imagine what it is is 600 pound people, right? 600 pound plus. And they're, you know, it's like their lives. Sort you know of. What I mean, because <coughs> if it's not, I feel like that's false advertising. No, they, they're people that are like <coughs> extremely obese. And it's them and their journey to lose the weight. They have to get surgery and go through through this treatment program. And it's really great because, like, it's just really funny to watch people, like, suffer. suffer, Yeah. uh, From, from, like, their, it's like their own fault. Yeah, like, they brought it on themselves. I hate the argument that's like, well, they have... An illness um, an where they disorder. can't stop. They're stressed out and depressed, and they can't stop eating. Good. Maybe those people don't deserve to live. Yeah, well. Like, if you're literally, if you're eating five pizzas and a gallon of ice cream for a meal, you're doing that every day, you don't deserve to be alive. Yeah, like, how about you're consciously eating that, though? Yeah. Like, like it's a, it's a fuck. Fish- Oh, it's a vicious cycle, though, you know, like I know that's a little rough. And this is the second week in a row. I've gone on a rant about fat people <laughs> to open up the Fucking episode. Goddamn fats. But it's like, dude, fuck off. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, it's easier to not eat. Than it is to eat. Dude, I wouldn't have the energy to eat that much. Like, (laughs) like. Well, you'd be getting a lot of. Well, yeah, I guess not. (coughs) You're not getting good calories. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're getting bad calories. I'd love to see a my 600 pound life where the person (laughs) like just eats fruit and yogurt, and that's why they're fat. Right. Because then I'm interested. It's like, what you, the fuck is wrong I mean, with you? If you, you're eating have to fruit, eat a lot you're eating fruit, fruit yogurt. yogurt, nuts, berries, and vegetables, like right. exclusively. I'd like to see a vegan on my 600 pound life. I mean, you could do it. It's just like, you'd have to work at it, you know? A like, gluten free to... vegan. Well, let's just stick with. <coughs> we'll stick with the regular vegans. But yeah, now that show is great, though. Cause it's like all their fault. Like I don't know why it makes me feel so good when when it's like like I I understand I sympathize with people that have mental illness and yeah. and stuff like eating disorders whatever. But I'm gonna be completely honest. Sometimes it's funny. Well, also sometimes it's not an eating disorder and they're just fucking they want to eat food. Yeah. You know, that's, oh, you know what the craziest that. ones are, dude? The ones that like. They they call them feeders where they like make their spouses. They're like into fat people. 
So they oh, like okay. make their so spouses they, super fat. They're enablers. So yeah, they dude. really are. Dude, there was an episode where this woman was trying to get treatment and her husband didn't want her to lose any weight. And he was like sneaking in to the hospital she was staying at. He was sneaking in like uh, Burger King full meals and McDonald's <laughs> meals. <laughs> And sneaking in with the fucking happy her. meals and like shit. she was supposed to be on like a liquid diet and he was like sneaking in <laughs> all this food to the hospital and and feeding it what to a her freaking douche <sighs> it's like it's like being at one of them fat camps and sneaking food in you know dude so many people on that show fucking die yeah like on 600 pounder yeah life 600 pounder <laughs> 600 pounder life <clears throat> <laughs> you know, it's like they got rid of supersized, but they didn't really get rid of supersized. They just made people get two larges instead, you know? <laughs> Dude, I still can't believe that was a thing where you could get a half a gallon of soda for like three bucks. Yeah, dude, that was a steal. I mean, it was a good deal. I We used to, we would do that. Like we would go and get like two supersized Cokes from McDonald's yeah. and then pour them into a jug and and put it in the fridge. That's how we bought soda when I was a kid. Yeah, you might as well. You could get a gallon of Coke for like five bucks or something. Yeah. Which I mean, you could still get you could get a two liter for like that same price. But it's not the McDonald's Coke. Right, it's a different formula. Dude, McDonald's Coke is the shit though. Like, let's talk about that for a second. Well, it's more syrupy, you know. Definitely is more syrupy. <coughs> I feel like it doesn't have the it doesn't feel like it has the uh the burn. Yeah. There's yeah, no it burn. Have as much of the like caffeinated or not the carbonated sort of situation. Yeah. The carbonara effect. Yeah. Um the uh I don't think I, I don't like Pepsi, but I love Pepsi out of a fountain. Do you like Pepsi at all or no? I'm not really a Pepsi guy. Pepsi's okay. I'm not gonna I mean it's like I don't drink soda that much. Besides yeah, it's Baja Blast, sugar free. Yeah, yeah. I really, it's the only one. I haven't like. You know what is really good though is um, because I drink when I do drink soda, I drink the zero sugar, like Coke Zero or Pepsi Zero. But yeah. Pepsi Zero is amazing because it has as much caffeine as a monster. It it's a hundred twenty milligrams of caffeine in the Pepsi Zero. What? Yeah, I don't know why. Well, that makes no sense at all. Why would you? It says zero, so it should have zero. It's zero sugar. It actually tastes really fucking good. It should have zero caffeine. Like, I think Pepsi Zero is better than regular Pepsi. Actually, I, I think most zero sodas are better than their, than the actual soda. Probably because they're using, like, sweeteners instead of sugar. So they're just using other worse. types of sugar. Yeah, basically is what it is. They're just using fake sugars. Like, even this has fucking, for sure, fake sugar in it. <clears throat> It's like um, most things like now, it's like, yeah, it says zero sugar, but chances are it's got something else in it that's not as good for you, or they just don't know if it's good for you or not yet, you know, and they're just putting it in things. But it's like, that happens all the time. Anytime something new comes up, it's like, there's not enough shit done to it. There's not enough research done to it to be like, oh, this is, they can't, I feel like they can't definitively say it's good for you, like sucralose and shit like that. Like Splenda, those kind of sweeteners. Dude, I used to, did you ever used to use Splenda? I never really did, no. <coughs> it used to be everywhere, though. I used, yeah, I used to use Splenda and Sweet and Low when I would get coffee mm -hmm. when I was younger, because it dissolves better. Right. And I hated when I would make, I'd get a coffee at like a diner, and it would have chunks of sugar in it. I never liked that, so I would use Splenda or Sweet and Low. But now I drink coffee black. Yeah, I always drank coffee black, except for when I got like the flavors at Dunkin'. That used they used to have like like I used to get the caramel one. Yeah, and that shit's loaded with sugar. But that the, was um, the only time I drank any coffee with sugar. Dude, the quickest way to ruin a cup of coffee is to use this the sugar substitute. Any of them. I made a iced coffee at work. We have this coconut flavored coffee. Yeah, did it have ice in it? Mm, well, we have coconut coffee, and then we also have uh, toasted marshmallow coffee. So I mixed them together, so I had coconut toasted marshmallow coffee. Okay. And then I I took 
uh, two mocha creamers and I threw those in. And then I took two Splenda and put those in. Literally, I had all those flavors in there. All I could taste was Splenda. Yeah. Okay. It's like a very, I don't know, it's like a very chemical taste. It's a very splenda y taste, you know? It's like a splendid, it's splendish. It's got like, a lot of splenda. I feel like um, that's what chemical, like certain chemicals would taste like that. Like if, if, if. It's, it's a chemical, though. That's like if I had a is. team to pump my stomach immediately right next to me, right. and they were like, here, drink this antifreeze, I feel like it would literally taste like Splenda or Diet Juice or something. Like, right. I feel like even if you get your stomach pumped like immediately, you're still going to do a little bit of... You think I'm going to do some damage? Yeah, like there's some lining issues. Well, I'll eat some yogurt first, get some probiotics going, you know, and then I'll drink Yeah, like the layer antifreeze. it up. Yeah, like yeah, layer yeah, yeah. it up with like eat a, a... I'll eat a taco 10-pack and some Greek yogurt. Yeah, yeah. And don't swallow or don't chew any of the tacos. Don't like, chew any of the tacos, dude. Because the then, because then the the tortillas come right out and they line your stomach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They and open then right up. when they like go to pump my stomach, we get Taco Bell after, and That's it's not point. chewed or digested at all. So it's like fresh. Right. Yeah, you can get eat it again. It's like refried beans. It's like re eating Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you were really on my case about the Taco Bell sauce. Well, you didn't get any sauce. It was kind of... Bu- was Seth is mad because I didn't get any sauce. I ate, I ate a whole Taco 10-pack before we started recording. He, I didn't, went to, he went in and then got like a bunch of shit, and then I went through the drive-thru afterwards. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I was in there for like 10 minutes, and we get out, and then we go to... Seth goes to pull out and immediately pulls into the drive-thru of Taco Bell. Yeah, I had to eat a drink. And we were singing Joe. I was singing Joe Walsh. You weren't singing. I was singing. He was singing. I was screaming into the microphone. Right. And then they were singing back to us, which was pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, they were finishing it off. Yep. Um, Dude, my heart rate is not good right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like way inconsistent. You're getting like fucking- <laughs> I'm getting cold. Heart murmurs and shit. <laughs> oh my God, my stomach. It is so full. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, dude. It is so full. Like, I I brought four of these white claw tall boys. I was expecting to drink like two at least. You can't now, it's dude. I cannot. See, that's why I don't get those. That's why I can't eat an entire like twelve pack or whatever anymore. It's so hard not to eat the whole thing. It's it is. It's because it's so, dude. I ate the first taco in literally a single bite. Yeah, they're small. Like you just because you can put them away so quick. It's not like well, you can. All you do is you fold it, like you fold it lengthways, and then it's literally a bite. Mm -hmm. Well, the key is like to not chew it at all. No, I put sauce on it. It Takes a little longer. I don't understand. Like, why would you want to put sauce on it? You're ruining it. You put hot sauce in it. No, one little packet. That's so stupid. Oh yes, whatever. It bothers me, dude. It's like the people like, like. I, I can do if if it was like Tabasco or something, I could do a little dash of Tabasco. But when it's like a thick sauce, oh, it's not that thick. It's just like uh, it's not thick, you know. But it's like it's actually you see pretty that watery. Shit, you see that fucking the Frank's Red Hot commercials, and they're just dousing shit with Frank's Red Hot. Yeah, it's like, dude, nobody likes your hot sauce that much. Also, yeah, I never really understood Frank's like, ridiculously spicy like hot sauces. Like, why would you want... It's like, at a certain point, it stops tasting good and just burns. Like, you don't even taste it anymore. You, all you taste is the burn. Yeah. So what's the fucking... Don't get, I like some fucking spicy shit, but sure, I agree but with I, you. I would rather, like, the... It, I would, like... The highest I'll go normally now is, like, sriracha. Yeah. That's about the hottest. Like, because I used to get the... Like... I used to get the Diablo sauce, which is the hottest one they had out there. And at a certain point, I was just like, this doesn't, you can't even taste it anymore. And then the fire sauce is hot, but, and it tastes okay, but like, I've dropped down to the hot sauce because it's still got a little spice, but it tastes the best because you can actually fucking taste it. It's not burning your fucking. And you can taste the rest of it, which is you want to taste the fake meat, you know, like yeah. you have to. So I don't put any sauce on it. Yeah, but you got to just do enough where you can still taste that. Do you yeah. like Tabasco? Yeah. What's your favorite hot sauce? Because um, people that if you're going to say Frank's, don't even bother answering. Because <laughs> I think like the, the, peop, the people that like Frank's. That's Bush League, though, you know. People that like Frank's Red Hot 
As the, like Frank's is fine. Don't get me wrong. It's good with chicken. But when I when I talk to people, I'm like, oh my god, Frank's is my favorite. It's like, have you ever tried any other hot sauce? Yeah. Like what about uh, <clears throat> like like uh, Danks or uh or uh. Shanks or Blair's. Well, it's more like the best hot sauces are the ones that aren't the big brands. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you got to get the off-brand ones. That's the only way. No, no, no. Like the smaller, the small brands. You know? Yeah, the ones that you've never heard of that make yeah. it in fucking some random state that you've never heard of. Yeah, some random city. <clears throat> like, don't get me wrong. Frank's is good. I like Tabasco a lot. Sriracha is pretty great. But like, when it's like when people tell me, I want to try the shit that the hot ones. Like, they have the sample pack. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, that's probably expensive. Zach and Christy have one of the sample packs. Uh, yeah, they probably got charged. It like, didn't come with the... It, though. it didn't come with the last dab, though. Oh, yeah, it needs to, though. Yeah. It has to have the bomb. You gotta have the bomb. It's all... I, I think it I might... I think they do it per it, season. I think it might not be a Hot Ones thing, but it's, it's a briefcase, and the hot sauces are sorted from... Mildest to hottest, like and it goes. Scale. It's like all the, at the very end. It's like um, scorpion pepper, right? Scorpion pepper and habanero sauce, which is pretty good, especially dude. It's wicked good. Like garlic pizza, dude. Dude, throw Tabasco or Frank's if you're a fucking asshole. Throw it all yeah, over. Then you can't Gar- taste dude, it. garlic pizza with hot sauce. You can't is, taste the garlic. No, it's so good. That's the best thing to put hot sauce on besides chicken wings. Is garlic pizza. But you're going to want to taste the garlic pizza, you know? But yeah, no, the people that tell me that French Red Hot is their favorite hot sauce, that's like telling me, like, Budweiser is your favorite beer. Or yeah, like, people say that, though. People do say and they're that. Lo- and they're wrong. They're you know literally I mean? stupid. They're wrong is what it is. They just don't know any better. I, it's just, I don't know. I'm being a total gatekeeper right now, but I just like talking shit about people. Like, I, I like talking shit about situations that I've never been in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I like making up a scenario in my head and then bitching about it. Right. Yeah, like, you know, like, it's like that, it's like when you're, like, in the World Series and you're about to win the game. You know what I mean? You know that feeling? <laughs> and then you blow it? <laughs> yeah, it's literally it's, like it's that, dude. It that. makes me so mad. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. <laughs> I, I almost, I almost hit some dude today because, dude, I'm so like today was like driver like retarded driver day or something. Like I even ran into some dude with you. Uh, yeah, one person on the bike that was like sitting. No, the person at the stop sign that just sat there, not turning. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, we sat. They were our, they were at the stop sign before we were even on that block. Block. Yeah. Like, we were turning to go down the block, and they were already at the stop sign. No cars coming. Yet. No cars coming. We're sitting there, and that other car was just sitting there with just their turn signal there. on. And then I go there, and I'm like, okay, uh, this guy's going to for sure go by now, right? And then I, <laughs> I literally just waited. I was like, all right, I'm waiting until you go. So Yeah, and of course, it was a woman driver. It was. Yeah. God. I can't. I pulled out earlier to like an intersection. I was going to turn like left or whatever, and like you know how you ease up into the intersection, and you kind of wait for it to turn red, and then you then you take your left. Like everybody does that. You're probably not supposed to do it. Yeah, technically. but it but happens. Does it. Just deal with it. Because yeah. otherwise, you're never turning left. Literally, never gonna turn left. So I'm up in the fucking intersection. The light turns red, and I go to take the left, and some dude wh- runs the fucking red yeah, light. That's the when they just run the red light like it that. It is really fucking cool. It's fucking dope. Yeah, I was like, I was happy with it. You know, like I was happy with the situation. It's just irritating, dude. People are fucking stupid. I saw like two people driving with their lights off at night <laughs> today. I don't like, understand how do you not know your lights are not on? Like, <laughs> and most cars now are automatic. They'll just turn the lights on. Maybe that's why. Maybe they just fucking don't. Like, there's a mode. Like, you can set it to automatic, and it'll just turn itself on. And when it's dark or raining or whatever. I thought like wasn't one of the companies doing it. So where um. At night, if your headlights aren't on, your interior lights aren't on. Ugh. Don't some cars work like that so that way people know that their headlights aren't on? Oh, that's a good move, actually. 
Because they're like, oh, my dashboard's not lit up. Oh, none of my lights are on. Yeah. Isn't that a thing? Or am I retarded? That should be a thing. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, a lot of times, like, if your dashboard isn't lit, your lights aren't on. Because there's usually, like, a mode that turns on your dash lights and then turns on one that turns on your lights. But you have to go through that dashboard light mode to turn on your lights anyway. See, what it should be, the first mode should be your lights. And yeah. then your dashboard lights. <laughs> yeah. So that way you flip the switch and the first notch, everything lights up, and yeah. you're like, oh, I'm good to go. That's actually true. <clears throat> or just leave it on forever. Yeah, my dad always had, like, most people I know always have their headlights on. So it was very weird yeah. to me when I met people that didn't always have their headlights on. Yeah, why wouldn't you, you know? It's not hurting anybody. Just it's keep not, them on. It's not hurting you. It will later when it's dark. Down out. the road, yeah. Down Literally. Road. But like, you know, that's that we'll cross that bridge when we get there, you know? Dude, you know what bothers me more than anything? Global warming. <laughs> no, being told to be quiet. Oh, I don't see anything. Does that ever piss you off? When you're being having a, like, when you're quiet. at work and you're having a good conversation and you guys, are, like, you're laughing with your coworkers. And you're, and, like, right in the good part, too. Dude, like, you're, you're in the right. Pocket. Like, you're just having a wicked good conversation. Yeah. And one of your superiors comes over and they're like, I'm superior. <laughs> Usually they say that first. <laughs> they're just like, you guys are got to keep it down. Yeah. And it's like, but they're being way louder telling you to be quiet than yeah. you were already being. Yeah, it's like librarians, you know, like how come they always have to tell you to be quiet? It's like you're just making more noise. Just let us talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, quit being such a bitch. <clears throat> yeah. It's fucking irritating. It's always like at like the when worst you're, time. Like when you're it's, right in the middle of the story. You're in a good spot. And it's always like they have to cut it off, like right where it ruins the whole thing and you can't pick it back up. You can't like start over. You were in the flow. You had them. Yeah. You had them hypnotized. We were, we were in the kitchen today, closing up, and we're telling stories about, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, the lat, like, everybody has a story of the why they stopped drinking Fireball. Oh, yeah, like, of course. Or Jaeger, or any of those party yeah, but, but party liquors. You know that, like, the second you're like, hey, you want to shot a Fireball? They're you're like, going to get one. But, like, everybody has that Fireball story. So we're all telling our stories. The dishwasher is all the way on the other end of the kitchen from where we are. Mm -hmm. And he's like he's yelling. Superior? Is he superior? No, he's not. He's oh. not anything. Okay, okay. So he's, and, below, uh, he's below you. Like You're not superior. Dishwa it's not that dishwashers aren't anything. This specific one is legitimately worthless. Right. And so he's telling us. Shout but, out to the dishwasher guy. Fuck you, dude. You're fucking waste. I kind of like him. I honestly don't mind him. Um, Decent guy. But yeah, it's just annoying because, you know, you know, we're having a fun time like telling all these cr funny stories about how we got too drunk on Fireball. I know. Yeah. It's like you're and smiling, then you're laughing. My boss comes around the corner and she goes, I can hear you all the way from my office. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, and we can hear you all the way from fuck you, Ville. Go back to your office. She, why shut the door <laughs> if it's too loud? Like. <laughs> it's not bothering you at all. There's like visiting hours in the hospital we're over with. I always so it's love not that. like anybody's gonna hear us. No, I always love that when people get upset for someone being too loud when their door is open. It's like you could close your door, right? You literally she was behind two doors because her office close those. is part of a whole separate part of the kitchen. So you go through one door to get to that part of the kitchen, and then you go through another door to get to her office. Yeah. So she could close both doors and literally never hear us. But no, she has to tell us to be quiet because, and I quote verbatim, she goes, can you imagine if the department was if the Department of Health was in here and heard what you were talking about? I can't. It's like, no, that. I can't imagine the Department of Health being in our kitchen yeah, at 745 at night on a Tuesday. I cannot imagine that at all. <laughs> you want to know why we're talking about alcohol? Because it's 745 p.m. on a Tuesday and we're closing up. Yeah. We're not talking about this in the middle of the hallway with a bunch of fucking people family members and patients yeah. we're closing up a fucking kitchen it was a long day let us tell some story like we're not even allowed to talk during the day like 
Well, if you're if you get caught having a conversation by one of by either of the supervisors, you get bitched at because I never got that kind of stuff though. Like like as it, if you're watching, like if you're a fucking like HR person or like any sort of uh, like you're overseeing a bunch of employees, you got to understand that if they're working a ten hour shift or like a twelve hour shift, even if they're just working an eight hour shift. They're not going to be working the entire time. There is going to be downtime. Like, there's yeah. just going to be. It doesn't matter what job it is. There's going to be times where you're not doing anything. It's great because my my bosses <coughs> are completely perplexed as to why our turnover rate is so ridiculous. Right. We've, it's probably because you're constantly on people's ass. I hate that shit, dude. It's, I can't. Dude, they... They got into a discussion with me the other day because the company that runs the hospital is the same company that runs the nursing home. Yeah. And I worked for the nursing home first. Right. And I was telling them how in the four years I was at the nursing home, I watched five people either quit or get fired. I started at the hospital five, six months ago. I started six months ago. I've seen 17 people either get fired or quit. In six months. That's not a fucking... They're not quitting because Burned Dairy offers an extra dollar an hour. They're quitting because management's dog shit. You guys don't treat us like people. Right. People are quitting because they have someone up their ass at all moments of the day. I, I honestly fucking... The last couple jobs I've had have been pretty great about that. Like, I just work at my own pace and shit. But, like, I mean, even now, it's like... The, we're on camera all the time, so yeah, like the higher ups can see the stores, whatever what people are doing. But as long as you look like you're doing shit, it's like my manager and assistant manager, they're not gonna, they'll say shit if HR says something to them. Yeah, but they're not gonna be like, hey, fucking get to work or whatever. They'll just be like, hey, like usually they'll just be like, oh, here's something for you to do or whatever. Like, yeah, and that's way I I would prefer that than getting bitched at. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would. Like if if like let's say we're we're working in my kitchen right now and we're just standing and we're talking about f- sports. I would rather have our supervisor come up and be like, "Hey guys, like yeah, the game was pretty good, but hey, how about you go do this or help me out with something?" rather than coming out and being like, you know, for example, just saying like Oh, you have time to talk? How come this isn't done? How come that's not done? Like, my one There's of my bosses is There's literally like, you know the phrase you ever hear? Asshole? Yeah. Well, she, she the first day, like my orientation, she goes, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. Mm-hmm. That's literally her entire motto. She could sit in the office and watch YouTube videos all day. That's cool. But if you're, you know, talking to one of your coworkers, yeah, but it's not if you have time to sit, you have time to clean. It's if you have time to lean. She's yeah, not, she's not. It's leaning. just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous because it's like, you know, they asked me what's so much different about the nursing home, and all I said was we have fun there. <laughs> That's all I like. Work was fun, you know. You come in like we would come in early to hang out for like a half hour before our shifts would start in the morning. You know what I mean? Yeah, but work's like, not supposed to be fun, dude. It's supposed to like be it work. wasn't. It wasn't unusual for everybody to show up, you know, at like six thirty for a seven o'clock shift, so we could like have a cup of coffee and hang out in the office before the day started. And now over here at the fucking hospital, you know, if they see me, I one there was one day I was uh, I was off, I was on vacation. I came in to pick up my paycheck from the ER, and they asked me to work. Didn't ask me how my vacation was going. Didn't ask me what I was up to. They were like, hey, do you want to work today? We're short. Yeah. It's like, no, because we're short because you guys are dog shit at running a comp. Like, you're running a business. Right. It's, I, it's just like a, there's a way to do these things. Like, there's a way to not be an asshole and ask people to do something. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. If it, Like, I don't know. Some people are fucking power hungry, I guess. Or they get fucking when they they get into a manager position, or any sort of like higher rank, they sort of want to just be an asshole because they feel like they can. Yeah, it's just I've never had a job where they're like that. Like even at Novellus, when it would be, you know, 
balls to the wall in the middle of like a Monday shift, you know, if I'm sitting around, you know, my boss would be like, Hey, do you need something to do? And I'd be like, yeah. And then we would go do something. Yeah. Instead of like, what the fuck are you doing sitting in the office? What are you doing? You're supposed to be out on the floor. It's there's like, it's like the, 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 the tone. Yeah, exactly how it is. It's the delivery. Like, don't just be not an asshole. Yeah. It's basically what we're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> be not an asshole. And it's, it's the, the people that are like people in the hospital, they make fun of the, my two bosses in the kitchen. They call them company women. They're company. They're, those are a couple of company gals. And that's literally what they are is like, they are so, I don't know if they're paranoid about losing their jobs mm-hmm. or if or they have shit going on outside of work. And yeah. It's just bad. And, and they it's take like it out on people. They just radically stick to the rule book. The rules. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. Like they were asking me about how, uh, like we have the, the attendance system and excused absences are literally not a thing at the hospital. So when they're looking at my absences from the nursing home, they're like, whoa, how is this excuse? This and this. And I was like, well, uh, I had, under doctor's orders, I wasn't supposed to have any contact because I was so my immune system was shutting down. So I couldn't come to work. They're like, well, you could have gotten fired for that because you missed six days in a row. I was like, why? Like, I'm not even supposed to be at work. What do you want me to do? Like a medical, my fucking doctor is telling me, yeah, if you leave your house before this medicines wears off, you might die. Like, what am I supposed to do? You got to work. Die? You like, fuck work. you. Take the risk. You know, we brought this up last week, too, this whole fucking company loyalty thing. And it's insane, the the, the extremes that this Aramark, by the way, still Aramark, just like last week. It's insane the extremes that these people, these soulless fucking fucks. <laughs> like these soulless fucks that are in charge of this company, the the the, the extremes they go to, <laughs> to just keep getting confused about why they can't keep employees. Yeah, like no, it's not because the starting pay is only twelve eighty five an hour because that's not that bad. It's probably because you're all cunts. Yeah, I think like well, I think there's anytime there's a lot of turnover, it's either that. Or it's the fact that people don't train people properly anymore. That is also a fucking thing that happens there. Like, I think a lot of times, like, you get thrown into a <laughs> job, like, a, a new job, and you fucking, you basically are expected to do shit right off the bat, like, and know what you're doing. Yep. And I think no one's taught how to teach people. You're not you're not trained no, how to te- how to train that's, someone. That's the crazy thing is. And, and they kind of just pick a person to train you. Yep. And it's not like they go, oh, like maybe like here, this is how you should teach this and this and this and this. It's like they just kind of go, oh, you show them the fucking ropes. And if that person doesn't really know how to teach somebody, which is is a skill that you kind of have to learn, you that that person's not going to want to stick around because they're not going to learn how to do shit correctly. And they're not going to feel comfortable with the fucking position. That's what I was amazed with when I started the working in the emergency room. After my orientation was up, my boss shadowed me for a day and he pretended to not know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain everything to him with the most detailed I could get step by step for like a a normal 12 hour day. Right. And after that happened and I, I did it, I obviously passed. I felt like I immediately knew a hundred percent more of how my job works. But over in the kitchen, we got, I mean, the, the nursing home, it was the it was an issue too. But the good thing about the nursing home is that it's literally the same thing every day. Right. So like you pick it up after, it's, it's really simple. You know, you come in, you serve breakfast, you wash dishes, you go on break, you come back, serve lunch, wash dishes, go home. Dinner's the same way. You show up, serve dinner, wash dishes, go home. So it's like... The same thing. It's just repetition. But the hospital is so sporadic. And what they do is... Right, it's anything can happen at any time. Really. Like, like, let's say you got hired and you were going to start next week. And you were going to work Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday will be your training shifts. But Monday they might have you train on the line. 
Tuesday, they'll have you train dishwashing. Wednesday, they'll have you train in the cafe. Right, so by the time the fucking you come back to your Monday, you forgot everything. Exactly. And that's what they did to me when I went over there, was when I transferred over every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the first three weeks, was working the line. And then Tuesday, Thursday was uh, working utility, which is dishwashing, Charlie work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it gets to be, I do, I work Monday through Friday and then I have the weekend and then I come back Monday morning and I'm not being trained. Right. Come this, you know, at the end of it. I would always say, like, if I was going to do that, I would go, here's, like, I would have a day for orientation, another day after that where you work, then you have a day off, then you fucking work like a couple days in a row. Because the first day, you're really not retaining that much shit anyway. No. Because they're throwing a lot at you, usually. Like, most employers are just going to walk you through everything throughout the day. And it's like, you're not going to really remember most of that shit. So then you're going to come back in a couple days. You have a time to, like, fucking reflect on it. And be like, okay, do I want to do this or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's <sighs> like, uh, like with the ER and even with... um. With the ER and then Novellus was the same way and the manor was the same way. Yeah. Your your first day, you don't do anything. You're just watching. Yeah. You're observing. Yeah. And it was crazy to me because like my first day over, I mean, granted, I already knew how to do, I already worked in clinical food service before, so yeah. I had a decent idea. But like, I remember my first day, they just like, they, they this guy was f- walking me through for like the first hour and a half and then- he just disappeared and he just did his own thing. And then I would go seek him out and be like, Hey, uh, you know, Chris, what am I supposed to do? And he goes, I already told you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do this, 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 this. I got to do this, this, this. And it's like, wait a minute. No, no, you have to train me. You have to show me what like, the routine is. How come is. someone else isn't you doing your job today? And then you're doing the training thing. Yeah. No, it's crazy, dude. They, well, you know, they don't want to pay another person. No, I had to train somebody today, which is awesome. Cause they didn't tell me about it until I showed up. Oh, yeah, you're training this guy. Yeah. Oh, do all your other shit, too, by the way. Yeah, literally. Like, so I had to train the person, and then I also had to, you know, answer phones and, and run call downs and make, make trays and do I, all I this almost extra. feel and like it was like, what the fuck do you want me to do? I you're, almost feel like an orientation should be tw- a couple of days just to get fucking... Because, like, I feel like the hardest part of a lot of jobs is fucking getting used to where things are. Yeah. And then when someone asks for something, <coughs> being able to get to that location instead of looking around for fucking, especially like at my job where fucking someone, they're like, Oh, Hey, we need uh, like three 50 pound bags of chicken layer pellet and three neutrina fucking this horse feed or whatever. It's like, I don't, I, you know, now I know all the brands of where they are, but it's like, you know, your first couple of days, you don't know where shit is. So like you got customers waiting and you're fucking the only person there. Dude. I wish, oh man. It's like you got to, orientation is fucking important. For I think. real. Like my orientation for the, for the technician job was, um, the first day was literally sitting in a classroom for 12 hours. Right. And then my second day yeah, that the was plant, like six I was, hours of, at, of classes. Yeah. At the plant I was doing, I did like almost a whole week of eight hour days just doing computer work. It's like, well, I'm not really learning anything here. You're showing me slides. I'm remembering what was on the slides, and then I'm answering fucking eight questions afterwards. Yeah. Like, that's not training me. Dude, the best part, I remember my, like, the first orientation day I had at the hospital. Um, They had us take all the, it was, uh, like, a bunch of uh, life support courses. Like, we, it was, there was practical and practical training too but it was funny because at the very end we had to take like an 80 question test and it was open book yeah it's like wait a minute how the fuck are how do you i mean i understand it now (laughs) because you're like training you're 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 training us on how to find the information right and it's like a problem solving thing because nine 99% 99% of the time before I do anything I always ask someone so you're gonna not you learn a lot from asking questions yeah. too but it's just like you know 
you're about to put people's lives in my hands right. and you're giving me an open book test. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Even when I, even when I was trained on like propane and, um, like forklift and shit like that. It's like they would show, they'd sit you down at the computer, play the video and put the packet in front of you. So it's like, you can just answer those questions while they say it in the video, Yeah. but it's like, you're not really retaining that. They should make you watch the video, then give you the fucking test and see if you actually know what Dude, the fuck you're talking about. Wild as fuck. And then you're it's like, so Oh, okay. Time to go drive a fucking forklift and lift tons of fucking like, heat pellets and shit Did, like, didn't you already know how to drive a forklift or no no i didn't actually isn't it fun as it's, shit it is fun dude because like you feel like you're always like the back kicks out because it's it's like rear wheel steering yeah so like you feel like you're always doing donuts and shit i dude, i just find excuses so like every day just to drive the forklift and then i go out in the snow and like move pallets empty pallets around mm -hmm. just, <laughs> people will be like what are you doing i'm like i'm just moving pallets around i'm bored <laughs> Because like oh, we we sell so propane funny. anyway, yeah. so we just fill the fucking tank up and just drive the thing around. <laughs> that was like um, my my one of my favorite things to do when it, at Novellus was uh, pick things up, put them well, down. Yeah, anytime because when I was over there, I was exclusively like a forklift operator. But I loved uh when they'd be like, oh hey, uh, there'd be me and Josh because we were both new on the same shift or on the same crew. So they'd be like, Hey, uh, these four forklifts are low on fuel. Go fill them up. And the fucking fuel refilling station was like super far away from where our loading dock was. So we just got to drive a forklift across, like drive it like a quarter mile yeah. at like four miles an hour because, <laughs> because they weren't allowed to go fast. Really? But, mine, mine holds ass. <clears throat> that's, I'm so fucking jealous because ours were, were, we drive it around the whole parking lot. They shit. were locked, dude. Ours were locked at four miles an hour because so many people have died at that plant. <laughs> and, well, um, we only have one and like the, the fucking, the, the, the warehouse isn't that big, so like a lot of like the maneuvers you have to make with it are tough because like you're in tight quarters. So like it's kind of it's tough. Like there's it's an obstacle course every time you drive it. But like as soon as you get the hang of like the fact that the rear swings out, you're fine. Or like driving it in reverse is a little weird because you're basically driving it like a normal car, but you're going backwards. Yeah, the wheels. Turn. I never liked that. It was easy to get used to, though. It is. I mean, I fucking... Yeah, like, as soon as I did it, it was really a matter of, like, figuring out which... It has, like, four levers or whatever, and I'm like, what the fuck? Which one's which? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, pretty much do they you, tell you Do you have the one the that fucking... makes your forks get narrower and wider? Because that's the best. No, we don't. Dude, the first we time I... We only have the hydraulic side to side, Oh. and then the, you know, like, the 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 pitch like shift forward and back and then the lift dude the first time i used a forklift that you could use a lever to adjust how i wish we that was that. mind blowing to me because Actually, we don't um, need that because we just lift pallets anyway but when i worked at interface the forklift we had you had to manually move the forks yeah yeah that and sucks. that's a bitch dude that shit's so annoying because yeah. they're heavy as fuck <sighs> I mean, we, yeah, we have to do that if we have to do that, but it's like, we never really do. It's like, um, I wish we had longer forks though. Cause there's certain things like when we have to load trucks up, it's like, you have to be able to reach into like, get on the axle of the truck. You want to get right where the wheels are, but we have to set it down in the back of the truck, then pull out, get like halfway under the pallet and lift it up and then gas forward and slide the pallet back into the bed of the truck. Oh, dude, so I would not like you load up like people's pickup trucks and stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. We dude. have to do like pallets of like instant heat, like wood pallets. Fuck that, dude. And but I mean, they sign like a waiver when they oh, do they it. do. So if we fuck up their shit, it's it's on them. Okay, because <laughs> like I didn't mind loading around. I mean, I fucking got fired from there because I kept breaking shit. But like, if yeah. I was loading up like somebody's F three fifty or something, yeah. I would freak out immediately. Yeah, it's... Because, like, a forklift will fuck up any car, <laughs> like, <laughs> like on accident, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like any truck... 
Especially the way ours runs, it runs and it's like, yeah, rah, rah, rah. dude, if that so thing like, is gunning it, yeah, yeah, it like ours stalls out and shit like crazy. It's only a year old, but it's fucking a pile of shit. <clears throat> but it's fucking, they're just fun to drive. I should get one, dude. Just driving around, get like street legal. <laughs> just driving around with the forks up, like at eye level, <laughs> waist height, yeah. <laughs> do you think uh, Hitler was retarded? I kind of do. <laughs> there what, do you, what do you think happens when we die? <laughs> there was something that I was thinking of a while ago, like a few days ago, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm trying to get a serious topic change. <laughs> I mean, you're looking up something. Wait else. a minute. What the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I have this I have this thing called podcast riffs from three weeks ago that I never talked about. But when did I say it's like Silent Hill mixed with Lego Star Wars? What the fuck was I referencing with that? I don't remember that. <laughs> Dude, apparently these are all things that we talked about during D&D. I don't remember shit. 36 tacos for D&D. 36 tacos? Oh. You should have wrote more. Because than... <laughs> obviously... It's like Silent Hill mixed with Lego Star Wars. The fuck was I talking about? You were talking about a game probably, right? Yeah, I was. But I can't remember what it could have been. All I played recently, I played... um. Uh, Resident Evil Two, Call of Duty Mobile. Were were we playing a um? It was a co op horror game. Maybe it was Secret Laboratory. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I oh, know. I found out one of my co. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That scared the shit out of me. The fuck was that? It's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> You jumping scared me. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ, that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think happens when we die? <laughs> no, I found out one of my coworkers is like super racist, but it was really... It was it was kind of funny hearing her trying to explain herself because she's way old enough to know better. Like, she's younger than our parents. She's like... Late forties, early fifties, you know. Yeah. Is there an age threshold where like you're allowed to be racist? Like, what's the age? I think it's like, like under. It's like under eight and over eighty. Under eight, yeah, I guess that I could see that. Like if if I if I had like a seven year old, and if, it was like just and throwing it was just out throwing head bombs <laughs> and like calling people faggots, yeah, and yeah. spicks and stuff, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> I'd at be all. fucking kind of proud. Like of if it was a seven year old, I'd be like, dude, you're awesome. And you can get away with that and shit. If it was like an eighty eight year old woman that was like calling people faggots and right. spicks and saying the n word, I think yeah. it's funny that I won't say the n word. Yeah, you can just feel faggots and spicks. <laughs> I'll say faggots and spicks. <laughs> Fuck it. You know, yeah. Well, it's it's a different thing, different connotation. It's a different connotation, but uh, yeah. So like over eight or no, under eight under and over eight. eighty. Yeah, is when racism is fine. Cause yeah. like eighty. Okay, so yeah, eighty was. I would say eighty is about right. Cause you were born in nineteen. If you're eighty, that, that, if you're that eighty age years has old, to go up every. If year. you're eighty, no, if you're eighty years old right now, you were born in nineteen thirty nine. So that means when you were our age, the civil rights movement was just starting. Right. When you were 23, 24, you know? Yeah. You still you would think you would know better, though. It'd be like, it's like the late eight, or the late 50s, early 60s. When was Martin Luther King? When was that? That was like the 50s, January. right? <laughs> January at some point. <laughs> Mid-January. The Rose, Rose Parks. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Rose Parks. I don't think anybody's ever called her that. <laughs> I, I still think at eighty though, like you, you're at, you were at the point where you probably should know better. 
<coughs> you know what I mean? No, because I mean it realistically. If you were born in 1939, that means you were an you were an adult when Rosa Parks happened in 1955. Mm -hmm. You were considered an adult back then when you were 16. So like it's okay if you're 80 if you're 80 years old right now and you say the N word. Right, you. St I mean, you're all right. You know, you can get away with it. I'm not gonna fucking yell at you. You know, I'm gonna be like, oh, you know, you shouldn't say that, but you're old. Yeah, you're like, oh, grandpa. You know that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like it freeze frames, and then you hear but the you, you hear were, the laugh you were track. right though. Is that is like ten years from now, eighty isn't gonna cut it anymore yeah. because yeah, that that the age has to go up every year, right? Yes. Basically, that threshold age has to go up. Well, all, the eight. Eight, has to go eight down. stays. Well, okay, eight can stay. Eight, I guess. eight and under. I don't even know about eight. I would say like maybe seven or six. You know, once you're eight, you're starting to figure things out. You know, <laughs> I think once you're eight, you probably shouldn't be saying like dropping end bombs. Call people faggots. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're eight, let us know. You know. Well, you how think? about this? Five and below. And 85 and up. Yeah. 85 seems like a good cutoff because that means you were 21. It's going to be 86. You were, you were, it's going to be 86 next year, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in like a month. <laughs> yeah, that's very fair. But yeah, so if, you, if you're 85 years old right now, that means you were 21 when Rosa Parks happened. Yeah. So we'll, I'll let it slide. Yeah. You know, if you're 80, if you're 86... If you're eight, if if you're eighty four, fuck you, you racist bigot. Yeah, that's some shit. But if like you're eighty five, go ahead and say, go ahead and call my yeah. friend a faggot, spick retard, <laughs> a colored a colored faggot. Yeah. How many times can we say faggot? Uh, as many as we Doesn't want. Doesn't matter. I, guess. I don't know. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Cut <coughs> cut our hours. Yeah, no. What are you gonna I, do? Cut my hours? <laughs> what is that? From? I don't fucking work here. That's the Bill Burr skit where he's talking about the self checkout. Oh things. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do you recognize me? It's because I don't fucking work here. Oh, <laughs> uh, the mayonnaise is uh, over it's there. Over there. I just gave you one hundred percent of the money to make one hundred percent of the sandwich. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> I watched this thing that was like lambasting Bill Burr about how much of an asshole he is when he's on any show that isn't Conan. Oh yeah, and it's so true. Yeah, he, well, I mean that's his thing. Though, I, wa right? I watched this he was video. On Cowherd a couple times, right? Yeah, and he's, he's a total asshole. I fucking love it. Like, like I didn't realize <laughs> it until I was watching this thing that pointed it out. Like, um, that's kind of just how he is, though. Like, he's, he's a just, total dick. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't have any friends. Yeah. Well, he has that. Uh, he has a bit where he's like talks about some lady that was like, "Could you, sir? Could you calm down, please?" He's like, I, "He's like, this isn't me yelling." He's like, "I got a couple of more octaves." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "I'm just, I'm serious about my opinions, and I want everyone. You want to hear? I want you to hear all of them before you get to talk again." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is, though. Like, he's just that Boston guy. He's like, I feel like he just, he talks loudly. And I think he calls people out on their bullshit. Like, he's not going to, he's not just going to let shit slide. <laughs> like, that's just kind of how he is. He doesn't let things go by. But I remember watching him on, like, uh, the Colin Cow Cowherd fucking, like, the herd. Or the whatever. herd. And, uh. He just kept talking shit about like his studio and how he was like sitting higher than him and all this shit. Like it's fucking great. <laughs> Bill, like just watch like any of those Bill Burr Savage Moments videos on YouTube. It just I watched the I watched the one like the clips where he was on this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. And it's he weird was being like, he so mean. Yeah, it's he weird was being like, super rude. Yeah. It's weird because he doesn't know Theo, though. Like, it's it's fucked up. Like, I don't think he gets Theo's style, either. Like, he wasn't laughing at anything Theo was saying. Which, like, Theo is kind of... I've seen some guests where... On Theo's podcast, where they don't really get him. Which is... I, I understand that, because Theo is a bit, like... Out there, you know? <laughs> like, Theo's a weird guy. It's really funny, because I find him to be extremely relatable. Like more yeah, relatable like, than most comedians. Yeah, because which is it weird. seems like he's just a guy that makes people laugh because that's how he is. Yeah, 
and he's just a goofy a goofy southerner. I feel like he's yeah yeah like I think he's just naturally funny just from the way his personality is not so much. Yo, this is super off topic, but you ever like the balls of your feet hurt wicked bad? The shit sucks, dude. <laughs> I hate that. Like this part. Like when that it just starts to hurt, like there's a ball as tension in there. Right. When your balls hurt, yeah. <laughs> dude, fucking it's it does I hate that shit. But no, Theo's great. <laughs> I I think <sighs> Like, even sometimes Joe Rogan doesn't understand. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I think he's... It's weird. Like, some some comics don't get his style. That, that's what it seems like to me. Yeah, I, I don't even remember on, exactly. The, I don't remember exactly what he said. But he asked Bill Burr, like, a, a wicked fucking hilarious question. Like, obviously a stupid question. Obviously. But it was funny. funny. And Bill literally... Takes his headphones off and he looks at me. And goes, "Why would you? Why would you say that? Why would that thought even cross your mind? Why would you ask me that? You yeah. know that I wouldn't do that. Why would you ask me that?" And Theo's just like, "Oh, word, yeah, word, yeah, true, <laughs> true," and like is completely stone faced. Like yeah. he just pissed off Bill Burr because Bill is mad because he doesn't understand it. I don't right, know. that's but what it was. It, that was, was that, it was this whole thing about how much of a dick he is. Well, that podcast was weird. That whole thing was like a weird tone. Like I don't know if they got off on the wrong foot to begin with, or I think they just have different styles and they don't get each other. You know what I mean? I think Theo likes Bill Burr, but I don't think Burr knows Theo enough. You know? So like when I watched that podcast, I was like, "Fuck, this is really like awkward." Like I don't know. Th- there's no dynamic there. And it makes sense because they're completely different styles. <laughs> like, they're not the same. Theo doesn't necessarily... It, I don't know. At the same time, it's weird because they do both make fun of people. Like, that's sort of their style. But it's a different way. Theo does it out of, like... He has, like, this um, this this innocence about him. Yeah. Like, where he's just, like, being silly. And Theo Bill, does it all Bill is fucking, angry. He does it all in metaphors. Yeah. I don't know. I it like makes me worried. It's one of those scenarios that's never like, going to happen. Like, but I was like lay, after I watched that I was laying in bed and I was thinking about I was like dude, what the fuck would we do if like Bill Burr was on clear shots? Like how long He'd would it take for him to everything. rip me in half? Yeah. Like well it's like it's like when you have like a really good friend and then your other really good friend and then you're like excited for them to meet each other and then they just fucking hate each other (laughs) that's basically what it felt like watching that podcast because i was like dude i love bill burr i love theo this is gonna be great they're gonna fucking hit it off and then i was like wait a minute (laughs) like what's going on here like this is completely hard to watch because it was like awkward and shit (laughs) that happened that happened when um i don't think Wes remembers this but that happened when i had uh when I introduced Wes to my buddy Dan, and I remember, uh, like, <laughs> Wes is like, dude, I don't like you, you know. Well, like, I can't remember what our front. One of our friends was at a Jones party, and me and Wes and a couple other people were in the garage, and Dan came to pick up our friend from the party, and uh, so Dan hung out with us for a bit, and he had a beer. He was there for like a half hour, but he he introduced himself to Wes. I really don't think Wes remembers this because I only remember this because Dan mentioned it. I don't even remember this. And apparently Wes didn't talk to him at all, didn't invite him in to hang out or anything, and just we just sat in the garage. And mm. then they left. And to this day, Dan's like, dude, your cousin Wes fucking hates me. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, That's he does. hilarious. And I'm like, I don't think he does. He goes, dude. I was so uncomfortable. He barely talked to me, and I'm like, we were fucked up, guaranteed. Yeah, Because yeah, this sure. was like, you know, one of the final Jones parties. It was like 05, you know, 06, <laughs> one of those situations. Yeah, it was the same. 06 to 09 is a blend for me, or it's completely like a blur. I can't st- remember any of that. And then pretty much from It's 010, really funny because it's really funny because from 06 to 09, you were what, like 16? I was in like high school. It was basically like... My, my entire high school career. Which is funny because in 06, I was 10. Right. Yeah, you were killing it. You were like just getting over being racist. Well, 
<laughs> I don't know if you ever got over that. <laughs> you set yourself up for that one. That was a good one. Um, well, it's funny because my, my blur years were like 2013 to like 2018. Yeah. Well, yeah, I had like probably a three-year stretch. It was basically my Ponderosa years. You know what I mean? Those were the years I don't remember at all. Mostly because it was like, oh, time to work and like time to flip stakes and then go home and play Halo 4 way too high for, for until 6 a.m. and then do the stake thing again the next day. Dude, I'll never forget like one of the first times we ever hung out and you texted me and you're like, dude, come over. I got the house to myself, which I thought was funny because it never mattered anyway. Yeah. But I remember it was like it was like. The middle of winter, and it was like 8 o'clock at night, so it was already pitch black, and all I see is like a glow on the front porch, and I get on the front porch, and it was you and Christian sitting there, and I was like, what are you doing? And you just rip your, you ripped a bong, and you looked at me, and you're like, I'm smoking a bong on my porch. And then you just went back to, and then you just went back to, like, in plain view of every, like, anybody that was, that was walking by your house would have seen the three of us smoking a bong on your front porch. Which is funny, because it was like, I mean, it was pretty much right out in the open, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's, that's how it works, you know? Which is funny, because nowadays, like, it's basically accepted people can do that. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like it would be more accepted now than it was back then. To just yeah, well, bombs. like when I go, like I don't go to the bars that much anymore, especially in the winter. But the past few times I went out, I, w- I mentioned it before. You go to like the Sting, yeah. And if you go to the Sting on like a Thursday night before, like and and it's just townies, yeah. There's just bowls and joints. Yeah. Everybody's and just like once. <laughs> yeah. That's all you hear. <laughs> like the amount of times I've been outside the sting and I've had somebody, a stranger, hand me a blunt or a joint or a bowl. People are like, it happens. It happened more. Like it was more likely that I was going to get high with a stranger at the bar yeah. than I wasn't going to get high. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I would say seven times out of 10, Somebody outside the bar when I, while I was smoking a cigarette was going to be like, yo, you want to smoke a joint right now? Yeah. It's like, like hey, I don't I know this, you, but yeah. I got this hand-blown. Uh, hand, hand-blown, glass-blown, glass blown. python brand. <laughs> got that that perp skirt We're from up north. carrying around glass bongs. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I thought that was funny. So that might have been like the tail end of your blur years. Right. Because that was right when we started hanging out. So this was like, I was in college, so this was like. It's like when Five I lived up ago. in that house with Bill, like I don't, I, I only remember bits and pieces of it. Like, you were like, you browned out for like that whole yeah, time. Yeah, it really was. That's, well, that was like when I lived on Van Buren Street. I was drunk and or stoned the entire time. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like you don't remember. It's like, why did I even have those years? Exi- why did they exist? Because I don't remember them. <laughs> so why did they even have The worst is that other people remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You know what I mean? But the thing was, like, we did the same thing every night there, so it wasn't... Literally. Yeah. No, because when I lived on Van Buren, it was the same thing. Like, I would I would go to work at 6. That's why you don't remember it, though, mostly. Not yeah. Not because you're fucked up. It's because it's the same fucking thing, yeah. and there's nothing that stands out that is, like, a, a mark in time. Like, the mark in time for me is just the house, like... Th- the period of time that I lived there. <laughs> That's the only thing. Well, also that gigantic party where there was a bunch of, like... People doing... People snorting meth fucking, in the bathroom. Yeah. Because that was the night... There was the party where Graham and I were there, and I was 15 and Graham was 14. We walked in, immediately look in the bathroom, and there's, like, three girls in there snorting shit off the bathroom sink, and I remember looking at Graham and going, I'm going home, and I left. It was completely fucked. Like, and it was traumatizing for me because I remember spending that like entire summer fixing up that house for yeah. my, with my parents <laughs> because they owned it, and you guys trashed the fuck out of it. Yeah. What was that movie about the fucking party? Project X. Yeah, it was like Project X, but like- Yeah, except with fucking trash bag yeah. sluts there. Like, I remember the girl I was <laughs> fucking dating at the time had locked herself in my bedroom because I had a lock on it with like a key. 
locked herself in the bedroom, threw up on my couch, and uh, Dakota had to climb out through one of the windows in through my bedroom window <laughs> to get in there <laughs> and unlock it and shit. <laughs> The whole thing was wild like and it was weird because like I was up there most of the night because I didn't want to be anywhere near most of those people Wait, who were you even dating back then? Uh, This Casey girl that I used to work with at Ponderosa. She moved to like Florida Not even not even close to here anymore. I didn't even know you back then. It's wild Yeah, that was uh, Well, I love that story that you guys told about Christian when he was like 12 and he went over to Oh, what was it? Dave's oh, house? Yeah, yeah. That was like, so perpetual burn was still a thing. And it was basically, I'm pretty sure. I don't even know who fucking lived there anymore because everybody was always there. So yeah. like, I'm pretty sure Dave. Dave well, lived there because uh, Dave told the story too. I think Dave did live there. Maybe it was Dave and Jake or Paul, Paul Haggerty, maybe. I don't know, but like that sounds right. I think it was those two. I, I fucking don't remember, but everybody was always there. Like it was just kind of a hub that everybody would meet up at every day. And then after shows, they would have like parties there. And like we were up at my grandma's house. who's like a block away from it. And we fucking walked down because we were like, oh, fuck it. We can go over there whenever. Like that was just kind of like the spot. We walked over there and like walked in up the fucking stairs. It was an upstairs apartment. And I'm pretty sure Paul was sitting there, like, there was a couple times, like, there was a couple times where we just went over there and some shit was going down. But, like, we walked up, I remember one day we just walked in and Paul was sitting there and he's just ripping a bong, like, just casual bong. And Christian was, like, fucking 12 or some shit. Paul's like, that's good, dude. What's going on, dude? But, like, there was always, like, cocaine or whatever going on in that house. It was people playing guitars and playing cocaine, basically, is what it was. Playing playing guitars and cocaine and weed. But, like, I remember a couple times, like, fucking, we would just go there after the party or after the uh, after the shows. You got that or what? Dude, I, I always fucking turn it the wrong way every you time. You gotta turn it righty-tighty. Uh, the, the Perpetual Burn uh, CD release party. We went to the fucking apartment after that, <clears throat> and uh, we were standing there. My uncle went with us, and we were standing there for, like, fucking an hour and a half waiting Ugh. for, like, the guys to come back, the like, people who lived there to come back. <laughs> we were just standing outside of the, the house. You were waiting for the party to start, basically? Yeah, yeah. And because <laughs> they were, like, still at the venue, like, drinking soda and shit, you know? <laughs> like, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> But they had just released their album, so they were kind of like, you know, talking to people or whatever, signing shit. Chilling and stuff. Yeah, but it's like, come on, like, let's get the rest of the stuff going. Like, the good things. I'm trying to think of, like, the first time I was ever really uncomfortable at a party. <sighs> like, I remember there was a gap where I wasn't allowed to go over to Wes's house. And it was, like, from... Like 12 ish. It was like 12 to 14. So, like 08 to 010. Yeah. So, it was like right when Wormwood became a thing and Wes and you guys were just were like throwing parties and stuff. And I was too young to go over there. We played, we, we played more parties than musics. You know what I mean? Yeah. We definitely did more partying than musicking. And uh, I just remember there was one time I went over there. I was only, whenever I did go over there, I was only allowed to be there if my parents were there. And I wasn't allowed to stay late. And I remember there was one night where, like, we're all hanging out. We're all playing video games in the game room. And I had to have been, like, 12 or 13. And I just remember at one point, like, I got up to go to the bathroom and I came back and you guys were all gone. Nowhere to be found. And then I remember I like, w like I asked somebody and they were like, oh yeah, all the boys went down and stairs. So I like went to go to the basement and everybody yelled at me. And so I just hung out and waited for you guys to stop smoking pot. <laughs> and I waited for like 45 minutes. And when I came up, I just remember Alex and Anthony Serrano sat me down 
in one of the chairs in the game room. You guys were all playing Halo and stuff, and that's all I wanted to do. But they sat me down and gave me the riot act about how I'm never going to be allowed to smoke pot and how pot ruins your life and alcohol. And they were just giving me an intervention before I even knew what was going on. Yeah. Well, they were right, dude. They were right. Weed is bad. But I can't think, like, that party at Van- or at the Division Street house or whatever, that was fucked up just because... I wasn't. I thought it was gonna be like you know hanging out with my boys. I wasn't expecting to see like you know sluts doing coke in the bathroom, <laughs> like at while it was daytime still. You know, yeah. like it was, it was like six thirty in a, in the summer. You know, but uh, yeah, most of the time it wasn't like that. Like crazy though. For the most part, it was just people that like we had a regular group of people that were usually there. There's a chunk of people that could just come and go whenever, which I didn't mind because I had a fucking lock. <laughs> so none of my shit was fucked with. But I know people had shit stolen. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just fucked up when you live with a bunch of random people, especially when you only know like two of them <laughs> before you move in. I would least. never do that. <clears throat> It's like the person who talked to me about moving in ended up not even being there most of the time. He was just not. That was Dakota, right? Yeah. He just wasn't even at home most of the time because he was dating some chick that he had a kid with. I remember that. So, But, I mean, also his room was a closet, so he didn't want to be there anyway, probably. True. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think happens when you die? (laughs) I was going to say, like, uh, I remember the first college party I went to that was, like, very uncomfortable. Because I remember I was already doing the drugs that people were doing, but I had never done them in a party setting. I had, like, I had done coke with my friends and we'd go to, like, you know, a lacrosse game or a basketball game or we'd get coked up and just fuck around. Yeah. Yeah. But never like walking into a house, like a house that, like a frat house, and walking in and, you know, it's me and. The fuck? It's on my tongue. There's a hair on my tongue. But, you know, it's like me and three of my friends. And, uh. Say words. Yeah, I'm trying to find my. I'm not there. You gotta say words. Dead air. It's the definition of dead air. This is what happens when I get up to get a beer. You can't let him have I was going to drink another White Claw, but I only have two left. I want to save one, two for my house. Um. So when you play Halo, Halo Reach? No, I'm going to shotgun one and go to bed because I got to get up at fucking six tomorrow. It's already 10 o'clock. <laughs> but um that's what they say. No, I remember like we went to this we went to this SU party and it was me and three of my friends. And it was scary because as soon as we got there it it wasn't even 2 minutes later and we all lost each other. Oh yeah. And this place was packed and it, I mean I looked old enough back then. I had a huge beard in college, my hair was long, you know. So it's not like I felt like I was going to get kicked out for being underage, which obviously wasn't going to happen. But for yeah. some reason, until I you, was just intimidated by everything. Until Quay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> until Quay appears, <laughs> yeah. But I just remember it, like being petrified of everybody. Like I didn't flirt with any girls. I didn't talk to any of the dudes or hang out with any of the bros. Or I didn't play. P- I, I literally, I literally just found the quietest room where there was booze and i just sat there and drank alone yeah. and then i would go out on the back deck and smoke cigarettes you still do that you know like you're still in that that's your pattern you know that's still what i do yeah, yeah. well yeah, well that's pretty much what i do yeah, yeah like at, I mean. at the at the parties i go to 
Isn't I usually best? find like the quietest that's, room and yeah, I get hammered. Yeah, it's the best hammered. thing to do though. Yeah, because then the best is when you're in the quietest room and other people are looking for the quiet room yeah. and they see you sitting there Yeah, and, and they're like, like, oh, what's going on? And I, you're just like, oh, I was just looking for someplace quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, us too. Yeah, that that's the best thing. That's why I fucking don't do bars anymore, primarily. Also because it's way too expensive. Yep. But- Primarily because it's fucking annoying trying to talk over music you don't like and a bunch of people that are yelling and screaming over music you don't like. Yeah, and then you're hanging out with all your boys and they're all just trying to get laid. Yeah, and then you're like, hey, time to put money in the jukebox to play, n- like, fucking necrophilus. Meshuggah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, every time I go to the Sting, I play Bleed by Meshuggah the, as soon as I get there. And whoever complains, I avoid for the whole night. Yeah, and then the second they start playing it, they shut it off, or they yep. skip it, or whatever. They're like, oh, time to turn the jukebox off, because someone yeah. paid their hard-earned $1 to, <laughs> to listen to Michelle. Actually, Michigan. you paid like $3 Four box. so that you could hear it first, or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like a bidding war. In those that's the thing things. is, I don't like parties anymore. I don't think I like parties anymore. Like... I don't know. I, I feel I, like if we had a like an old school, like, like an old school trail party kickback thing, yeah. But those then, were more like they they felt more like get togethers. They, they were get togethers, but like they would turn. They like, felt like reunions. Like it was a get together until midnight. Oh. Then people would show up that you don't know or you only sort of know, and then things are like, oh shit. Uh, some people are going to bed or like I'm going to go for a walk or like I'm trying to find what you were just talking about and fucking sit in one of the li- random living rooms. Time to watch fucking MXC or some shit. <laughs> I liked I liked the parties when um I like I liked <laughs> the ones when it got fucking crazy and then Vinny and I would just go upstairs and fucking order zonies or some shit and just yeah. listen to shit going on. Like you could hear everything that was happening in the basement and we'd just be like and cause you know Vinny, like he gets everything is sketchy to him, so yeah. <laughs> he's like oh, doing that shit. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. He's like, Is there someone outside? Like he's fucking like paranoid about all of it it's so good <laughs> dude i'll never forget the there the party there was a party where um uh <laughs> like like the party the part like wes and everybody went uh, both wes's and wes uh, or both wes's and diane went would go to bed and then i would be in charge yeah, yeah. And now you gotta step up, you know. Th- those were the authority nights, and those those happened like the last four Jones parties. I feel like we're at the Rainbow Trail. We're all like authority <laughs> nights, where it would be like me, you, and the rest of the guys. Like it was, we were in charge basically. And I just remember there was the one party where that happened. And like a half hour later, all these people showed up and we kicked all these people out and it ended up just being a guy's night plus the Martin brothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were the best parties. It'd be like a guy's night plus the Martin brothers and Zamaya would be there for for some reason. Yeah, like yeah. Zamaya came to like the last five in, parties. Yeah. I remember there was one night where... It, it towards like at the end of the night, it was like after one in the morning and everybody already left and I remember it was just me... The Martin Brothers, and um, maybe a Berlin or two, you know, mixed. Yeah, in. it would be like me, the Martin Brothers, Zamaya, the Berlins, and like Alexis uh, Crouch. Yeah, and then one of the Martin Brothers would pull out Ecstasy or Molly or whatever, and then we would just <laughs> roll, and we would just be <laughs> fucked up on Ecstasy until <laughs> six in the morning, <laughs> and then I'll share a cab downtown and just walk. <laughs> I mean, walk home what else are you gonna do that happened more often than than i'd like to admit we're like <laughs> it's like three in the morning and it's just like me and three other people that aren't really friends with everybody and we're just doing drugs in the basement right or it's it would be really sketchy when it would be some of our closer friends that like we're always super against molly or coke yeah and then they'd be the ones to be like yo i got like an eight ball it's like, why didn't you bring this up earlier? Yeah. First off, when the opportunity was correct. Yeah. But I, I always thought those were like I still remember there was the one the Halloween party where I had Black Ray come. Mm-hmm. It was me, Ray, Zamaya, 
the Berlins and the Martins. And we literally sat in the basement and played on the djembe drum. Is that what they're called? Yeah. The like oh, the, he tor- the, the tortoise one. shell drum. Yeah, he had the one that was like a, it was like a steel almost. But it was like it had different tones to it yeah. and shit. And we literally I sat there. Called. We sat there and just chain smoked blunts and played with that drum for like mm-hmm. three hours. Yeah. Those but like I like we were saying before we went out down memory lane, those weren't really parties. They were like reunions and then they would get sketchy at a certain at, point. at a certain point. And then the sketchiness would subside and then it was like the come down of the party was the best. Right, yeah. I feel like. Like even at the the current parties that we have you know, the, you know the come who's down is the best stick part. Around, yeah. Like whoever sticks around is like I don't know. It's always uh Cause like we we like all those post battle parties were crazy because a lot of people would show up that you don't really know, and then it's like well yeah the cops are gonna show up because there's way too many fucking people, and Steve's fucking yelling into a microphone so. <clears throat> I still remember the last one the party the 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 last party the cops got called to where you guys fucking played a set in the dining room with the windows open. Mm. And Big West lied about getting a fucking noise ordinance thing. What are they called? That's what mm. they're called, right? A noise ordinance? A noise yeah. order? Whatever they're called. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a noise ordinance that you can't... But that doesn't make any sense, because we it was during the day, wasn't it? Somewhat? It, it was wasn't like early, even past... It, was like it wasn't even past... Like, it was still light out, yeah. Because it was like... It was like the beginning of the summer, and it was at like eight o'clock, where it was like dusk. Right. So but that it shit was, is not. I remember illegal. it being on like a Friday or a Saturday too. Yeah. Which it's is not, like it's not illegal though. Like that. Yeah. That's the thing is they have to show up though. Yeah. The cops have to show up if they get called for it. So even if it's not illegal, they still have to do something like respond to it. And they still have to show me like, hey, what you're doing isn't is fine, but right. you cut it out in like two hours. Yeah, like they have to sort us at some kind of. Which is funny because if you ask Big Wes about that, he'll act like he talked his way out of it when really there was nothing to talk out of because yeah. they didn't do anything wrong. They're just like, oh, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yes, I talked myself out of it. I still remember the one party where um, Vinny, Vinny freaked out because he was outside and the, the cops were shining the the flashlight on Marley and he thought the cops were going to shoot Marley. <laughs> but That's I, what I'm like, talking about with Vinny. <laughs> like, I remember we were sitting, I was sitting in the whole house with like, it was probably just like, I think it was like me and Aaron and Mark and Vinny comes in and he's, he's like, guys, guys, the cops almost shot Marley. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And like, it took, it took a, a few minutes for him to be able to get out the fact that the cops were here. Yeah. But I remember it not being a fucking big deal at all because we were just sitting in the whole house where the cur- like the curtains and everything were drawn anyway, you know, so you can't see into the whole house. And I remember he kept like frantically hiding all the pipes. It's like they're not going to they're not going to do anything. No. No, they didn't even it, it, the one time when they did come in uh at the battle party, they didn't really do anything. It's like everybody just kind of ran away. Everybody literally was running away. It was like a movie scene where just literally everybody's fleeing. And they didn't do anything. They just fucking came in. I remember just being down there and seeing, like, you know, when you see a fucking light catch the side of your eye or whatever. That's what it was. And I turned and looked, and a cop was standing there with a flashlight, just came into the basement. And I was like, okay, well, what do we do here? Just leave, I guess? Yeah. (laughs) That's what we did. I just went upstairs and left. It wasn't like there was anything really... Actually, I didn't even leave right off the bat. I went upstairs and just like stood around. Like, what What are you going to do? Like, it's yeah. not like they're going to... They can't fucking catch everybody, first of all. There's like two people there. Yeah. Two cops there. I just... I remember when that happened. And they also don't want to be bugged by that kind of stupid <laughs> shit. Like... Yeah. There's underage drinking, but... There was gre- there was underage drinking at Greens, you know. <laughs> like you could just go across the city and catch a bunch of kids if you really wanted to. Yeah, just look down Bird Street on a Thursday night. Yeah, go to Water Street on a Thursday and scan everybody's IDs. Like what the fuck though? Like I remember fucking seeing Christian's ex. I'm not gonna say her name, but Christian's ex girlfriend out at the bars. She was way underage. And yeah. she was just getting into bars because she was a girl. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, literally. <laughs> I'll name drop her right now. My sister fucking had a fake ID when she was 15. 15 yeah. and she was getting into water and, and get getting into two cans. And it's like I remember because I was walking down Bridge Street and I was like, oh fuck, like I know you, but you're not old enough to drink. Why are you wearing like a Bridge Street run shirt with fucking signatures all over it? I remember one of the girls I went to high school with that I actually work with now at the hospital. She got sent to a fucking treatment program because she was a freshman. She was a freshman or a sophomore. When, or we were freshman or sophomore, and she skipped school to go to Bridge Street Run. Yeah, of course you got it. And a teacher school. caught her. <laughs> like, Bridge Street Run was still going on, and a, one of our teachers was at the bar that she went to at fucking yeah, caught that's her. the thing. You never know. It's like, And it's hilarious that that happened, because, like... You we're asking for it, you know? Yeah. Sort of. I mean, that's prime age. You know, that's, like, that's where Billy Barlow finds his girlfriends. He finds yeah. the underage girls at BSR. Right. Brings them to Jamaica and finger fucks them. <laughs> yeah, but he's giving us a water park. So he is giving us a fucking cool water park. Um, I don't know. It's fucking. I just feel like it's like wait, just wait. Like, why do you need to be at the bars now? Literally, you, don't, you do not need. To. Like, I want to know. Plus, my where sister, are you getting the money my, to my, fucking go to the bars? Right. I guess everybody's buying you drinks, right? Yeah, because you're a woman. You're fucking eleven. <laughs> 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 like, that's the thing I asked my sister. I'm like, why are you even at the bar? And she goes, ah, I just, I, it was just something to do. Like, what? What are you talking about? Something to do? Committing dude. a felony is just something you want to yeah, do? What the fuck? Watch Fox and the Hound for the 13th time. You <laughs> like, know? yeah, fuck you. Like, even after I turned 21, I the only wasn't. reason I went to the bars was because I could. Yeah, even then, like, I wasn't even that interested in going to the bars. I just would go because people were going. Like, yeah. Oh, we're go like, it would be somewhere, like, hanging out, and they'd be like, oh, we're going to go to the bar. You want to go? It's like, yeah, sure. Like, whatever. Like, I remember when I, when I first turned 21, the... Uh, my friend Lexi and I, or me, Dan, and Lexi, went um, bar hopping the night before. So I wasn't 21 yet. But we went to like we went to the Woodchuck. We went to Gary's. Yeah, it's like, and I then never... we went to the Sting. And it's like they're not gonna give a shit because they're local towny bars. Right. And I'm also turning 21 in an hour. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But those are the bars that, like, the woodchuck, you're not going to be 15 and get into the woodchuck. You could be 15 and get into two cans or the Ferris wheel. Yeah. When And I, I say this, I don't care how much of a dick it makes me sound. If you're over the age of, like, 22 or 23 and you still go to Hurricanes or the Ferris wheel or two cans, you're trash. Like, if you're 25 and you're going to two cans, you're fucking worthless. I don't think I've ever even been in there. When it, what's okay, two cans on Water Street? Yeah. I haven't been in there since. It's the it's one that's that. right across from Old City. I used to go when it was hurt, like all hurricanes. The whole spot was hurricanes, which yeah. was cool because, like, you could just go into the back room where the pool table was. They used to have a Nintendo Wii back there, too. <laughs> or I think it was a Nintendo Wii. No, it yeah. was a, a Kinect or something like that. And we used to play on that thing. But there was like a little, there was a pool table, a couple arcade games, like a driving game and stuff. So we would just hang out back there. But then upstairs, you had like the dance floor and shit. And then it's like you just have, you wouldn't go up there because it's, yeah. it's a dance floor. I should rephrase what I said. If you go to two cans and go upstairs. Yeah, but that was hurricanes. Here. It was like it was a different thing, basically. Like it was. It was. Yeah, because no hurricanes. I don't know how two cans looks now, but hurricanes is all is been where it's been. Yeah, but the whole thing used to be hurricane, like the downstairs and the upstairs. The downstairs is the Ferris wheel now, and the upstairs is hurricanes. They're two separate bars technically right two cans is the one that has the pool table in the back okay and the arcade games and then upstairs is still two cans oh okay because that used to all be hurricanes and then next door where um Wait the minute. ferris wheel if is. you're going down to water street the first one is two cans on your left yeah Okay. That used to be all hurricanes that did and now hurricanes is over the ferris wheel like up above the Ferris wheel. Really? Right? I didn't know Pretty that. Pretty sure. Because the Ferris wheel has the upstairs. You go up the fucking thing and there's a dance floor up there. Yeah, and you have to get a second 
wristband to go upstairs. But there's also a dance floor next door in whatever that used to be or what that whatever that is now. I haven't been down there long enough. In Did you ever go to the so. gaslight, the one that's below? I've never been there. No. That place is fucking weird. You know what? I always like it's I've, down like it looks like cheers where like you go down into the bar. Yeah. But like it feels like it's wanna be it's gonna be one of those like I feel like I'm gonna walk in and there's gonna be like a bunch of bikers with fucking pool stick like pool cues. No, literally, dude the one like, time in I fingerless gloves. And the shit. one time I went to the gaslight, and I've only been there once, it was really uncomfortable because it's very small. Yeah. And like when I I went there with my buddy Tim and we walk in, and it was just a bunch of big burly bearded tatted guys playing it darts is? and being really loud. So it's like, and it's like I'm not gonna go and sit at this bar because I know one of these guys is gonna fuck with me. Yeah. So like you got to go to Weenie Hut Junior or whatever. Yeah, you know? basically. Like yeah. that was the salty spittoon. Yeah, it, it, that's what I'm thinking. Is it's basically that. And there, you know what's funny is there's a few bars that I still haven't been to in Oswego. I've never been to the Brick, and I've never, never been, I've, never I've never been, been to Spencer's been Alley. I know the Brick actually has a stage. And they I've, actually have like a little stage. They can they do some live shows there. What's that shitty one on Odd Bridge what's Alley the, Cat? I've never been to. Okay, yeah. What's the one off on like Second, um, on Second Street that's got like the. It's like outdoors, sort of. Spencer's Alley. Yeah. Or the club. That place is pretty cool. <coughs> it says you need two forms of ID to get in. Hmm. What the fuck? You gotta have like a birth certificate. And shit. I don't know. You're bringing in like I've never been social. there either. I think I think it. I wonder if it would work if I brought in like my work, like my hospital badge yeah. and my I, my driver's license. They just want people's social security number. Right? Probably. I don't know. The Sting's my favorite bar in town. I really like Avery's too. Avery's is cool because it's just small. It's a like wicked a... small. Like they don't they don't have shit, but it's just a nice small little bar. Yeah, but that's all I want though. Like it's I just want like I like Lagraphs a lot. I literally, if I had a bar, it would be just a pool table and a bunch of sports. Like it'd be like a sports bar with pool tables, maybe some ping pong tables or something. Have you ever been to the Irish? <clears throat> no. That's that's a nice bar. I think you'd like that. That's by Kingsford. It's right on the corner, and you walk in, and you, right when you walk in, it's the full it's a full bar, and then in the back it has one of those uh, bowling things. Oh yeah, and then it has a pool table. It's a very bowling things. It's a very kickbacky bar, but yeah. um. That brings me back to my other point. Like, why would a high schooler need to go to the bar? What are you yeah, doing there? What are you getting from it? Like, par- the part of the well, thing... That th- there's more risk than reward. is necessary. Like, yeah. Like, part of the fun part about underage drinking is doing it at, like, under your parents' house or at your friend's house. Where nothing's going to really... Where work. nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Like, we have the benefit of being able to do it at Brandon Trail... Because they were like, look, if you're going to drink or smoke pot here, you're going to stay here. So, like, so, okay, don't fuck anything up. Anyway, so. Yeah, and it's like, cool, that's fine. You know, let's you know, let's buy a bottle of Fireball and play Halo and, like, smoke a joint on the back porch and then go midnight swimming. Like, that was fun when we were younger. That's what we did for fun. And then you got, like, my fucking teenage sister, you know, Getting a fake ID when she's fifteen, and I mean, it was also just the house was like perfect for that. They're yeah, like, oh like yeah, maybe we she have... doesn't have the opportunity if they're, she had the like... opportunity to go to Brandon Trail. Right. I mean, it's like, well, they had a fucking hot tub <laughs> and a pool and a but, basement with a fucking you know a old... giant basement. Yeah, we had the fucking the foosball table constantly. Remember, remember there's when we constantly had the... instruments there you can just fuck around with. Remember when we had the pinball machine? Remember that? It was only there for like a year. Like I don't think so. When Wes was younger, it was like his 13th oh, or 14th maybe. birthday. Big Wes bought him a fucking pinball machine. Yeah, for sure. It and it broke immediately. And then they we fixed it. Like when I when I first started going over there, they fixed it. We had a pinball machine at like it broke at another party. Like two parties later, it broke. But I just remember we had a pinball machine, and yeah, it was you so can't cool. have a pinball machine at a party, dude. It's no. like not gonna happen. 
It's like when you have a giant cardboard cutout of James Dean. Well, it's like Busquet, that shit's going to break. I like, think the Busquet ball era was the best era. Yeah, because like somehow that never broke, that fucking basket thing. <laughs> they still have it. Yeah, of course you still have it. You have to. I mean, we even did that at their other house, so. I mean, it's a game that travels with you, you know. <laughs> we should set that up in Paul's basement there. <clears throat> I'd love to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should do it for the. We should do like a a promo video, and then we'll do we'll go to Invent Help, and then we'll have them steal our idea. You ever see that commercial? <clears throat> Invent Help. Yeah, I guess what they do is they get you. They take your invention and try and help you run it up the ladder, basically. But to me, it just seems like they're just going to take your invention if it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're really, really like, hey, sign this paper that says we can take your invention if we actually like it. I feel like they just make a ton <laughs> of money off of people who have horrible ideas. Because c- people have horrible ideas. So, <laughs> like, and then every once in a while, there is a good idea. I guess what they do is they do, like, 3D modeling and shit and... They give you, like, they give you those, they basically develop those 3D uh, demos of how your product's going to work and shit like that, and then they pitch it to companies. That's the general idea. They're not a sponsor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I mean, I get, like, it makes sense because... What do if you come up with something right? Like if you come up with a fucking invention that you think is gonna go somewhere, and you don't have the money to put into it and develop like a prototype of some sort, I guess you got to go to somebody, right? You're you're looking for someone to rely on to do that for you. Yeah, because it's like most people don't have the fucking capital to just put into some invention that they don't know if it's gonna work or not. It's like people that come up with random shit. It's like I always felt like we needed a t- like a type of tape that you could eat. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is that a good idea or no? Because then you can put it on tacos, right? And they won't fall apart. But you can eat the tape. We gotta go. To- <laughs> we gotta go to Invent Help, dude. Get that taco tape going, dude. No, I feel like that'd be awful. Like you don't what? want, you, it, don't you, want flavor you don't want. It. Oh wait, so you wouldn't use ta- you wouldn't use that tape for like arts and crafts. It'd be just food. Yeah, it's like an edible tape. You like you? Well, yes, you could use it for arts and crafts, but it's not built for that. It's built, it's built for tacos. That's actually not a bad idea at all. You could tape it like up. you could use tape to like tape food together. Yeah, it's like and then eat the tape. <laughs> yeah. What well, if it guess- was like you know how those um breath things breath strips. Yeah. What if it just dissolves and it's flavorless? So it's you. You want like non-toxic, flavorless glue? Yeah. That's also edible. Yeah, like an adhesive. Like an like an strip. edible adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you can put on tacos, and then we'll sell it to Taco Bell. You know what I mean? I don't like my food being sticky though. Unless it's not it's gonna be rice. sticky. I mean, it's just gonna be like enough to hold it together. We could come up with it. We, you just have to have the money for it. I think it's good, yeah. I mean, so if we I watched, have to, we can do Pussy, Pussy Slayers instead. We should do that. I watched uh, two episodes of the newest season of Always Sunny. And they were... Um, sorry to tell you this, Wes. I also... It doesn't help that I wasn't feeling that great. But so I tried to watch those two episodes again. Which ones? Um, D Day. That one was okay. <clears throat> and um, I thought the last two of the season were really fucking good. Fuck! What was the other one? The it was laser D- tag one was really fucking. It was D Day, and um, I mean, I mean, what happens? You know, dude, Describe I can't even plot. think of it now. It was D Day. And I'm completely drawing a blank. <laughs> Fuck, I have to look it up. I just watched them again the other day and I literally can't remember them. Um 
was it the one where Charlie and Frank get the roommates or the, not the roommates, the like, it was the one where Frank, they run into the guy at Giolini's or whatever. Oh yeah. The blue thing. Oh, everything he eats is blue. Cause he thinks it's better for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want, we watched that episode in D day. Yeah. And I chuckled a few times. I laughed pretty hard at the, I thought D day was pretty good. I thought they were both pretty funny when I first watched them. Yeah. But I was also with everybody watching them. Those aren't bad. And I then think... I like got home and I want I wanted to watch the whole season again. Yeah. I and think I the didn't... weakest one was the Thunder Gun one. And... I don't know. I just I feel like maybe I'm expecting too much. Yeah. From like the shows I like all the shows that I used to watch that I tr- like South Park I I mean I'm I admit that I. She watched the South Park episode where uh, it has like Randy Savage and he's like, he's basically a uh, guy that like calls himself a woman and starts competing in like all the fucking sports and. Like, I heard it was amazing. It's fucking hilarious. I heard it was really because it's literally just Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I don't know. It's like all those shows. I the like the only show that I can consistently watch. We talked about it last week. I can literally watch any episode any day. Is Aqua Teen, right? Yeah. The uh, I mean, but there's no new episodes of that coming out, so I'm not expecting anything different. Yeah, it's like I'm not excited for new Rick and Morty at all. I don't know why anybody would be. No, I don't know why anybody. That show has consistently gotten show, but... worse since it started. Yeah, it like, was pretty good at getting bad. You know, like I mean? the first season, perfect, one of the best shows I've ever seen. The second season, pretty good, couple of duds. It got too smart. You know, the like, third season with Pickle Rick, yeah, and that whole sh- that one was fucking garbage. They did a good job of like having their fan base kill the entire series because their fan base like was basically like just being elitist. <laughs> I loved uh I love the thing about I think they're only doing six or eight episodes in the last this is the last season. They're only doing six or eight episodes. Right. Yeah, it's the move. Well what other things have the have the fans that, like that I think Sonny only did eight episodes. Probably. But what other shows are there where the fans are like major dicks about the show? <laughs> like Rick and Morty is one that I can I can think of. Like if somebody tells me their favorite show is Rick and Morty, I immediately think less of you. Right, yeah. Yeah, you got like a problem on your hands. <laughs> like But then again, if I don't know what I would tell somebody my favorite TV show is if they asked me. Scrubs probably. Yeah. There's probably people that feel the same way about Scrubs. Where it's like somebody in a somebody on a different podcast in a different part of the world is like, man, if somebody tells me Scrubs is their favorite TV show, I immediately think less of them. Right. Scrubs is like a for me, it's like a good uh, background. It's a show. comfy. It's a comfort food show. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. <clears throat> like I can, Sunny. I I like with always Sunny. I can't. I've. I can't just watch a random episode because I feel like what makes it so funny is just the plot line and the misdirection. And once you've seen the episode so many times, it there's no, it's still funny, but it's not as funny. You know what I mean? I don't know. Sunny's one of those shows that doesn't age well for me. Mm, it's, I still I, laugh at I haven't rewatched the it in, older in episodes. years. Like, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I rewatched it. Yeah. It's probably been like three or four years. Yeah. I, Sunny is my favorite show, I think. I would say. I think it's probably, it's it's one of my favorites ever. I just feel like. But I don't think I could, if if I couldn't sit down, if it, when I get home, I'm not going to be able to sit down to watch Sunny. I could watch Scrubs or. I just feel like they all pull off their characters like so perfectly like they all have different they all have flaws and they're all so obvious flaws too and they carry that shit over through every episode and like 
they show it in different ways. Like you, but you have like this. Like Dennis is basically like a fucking sociopath, like a murderer and shit. Yeah. But like they kind of like subtly play it up, and the way he acts that character, like his expressions just nail that character. Honestly, like his fucking like blank stares that he does and shit. <laughs> it's so good. And then I mean Charlie's just fucking good. Honestly, just like I feel like just that's his character came natural to him. And, like, Mac wasn't an actor in the first place. Like, Rob wasn't ever an actor, but he made the show. And I think what I appreciate about it is that they made the show on, like, a $300 budget. And they pitched it to Fox, and they're like, okay, the, you got a show now. <laughs> like, And it's all, uh, I like shows that are semi-scripted, where they can just, go off and come yeah. up with something cool. I know Curb Your Enthusiasm is like that. Quite a, like a, pretty much the entire show is just ad-libbed. I think I think honestly the thing that cuz Curb is a, is is what got me too. Cuz I love Curb, but Curb and Always Sunny, you know what they do? They make me wicked anxious. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's like secondhand embarrassment almost right even if i know how the episode like it makes me cringe some of the shit because it's so it's so wrongfully funny like it's so funny for all the wrong reasons yeah that's true situational comedy though to me yeah agree like that that's what a real sitcom is in in my opinion like i don't think like you know I like Cheers. Like, I like watching Cheers, but it's like, it feels like every episode is the same fucking thing because it's all shot with one camera, and every every episode just kind of feels the same. There's not really a storyline that really progresses. But, like, you also got shows like Three's Company where it's like you can just drop in on Three's Company and watch it, and then it doesn't matter what happens at all. It's just a time killer thing. That's how a lot of those sitcoms were, though, back then. Like full house and shit like they that. They never really followed up. Yeah, it's like there was <coughs> like a progressive story arc, but it was it carried out over so many episodes that like you could just drop in here and there and fucking yeah. Scrubs was kind of like that. You could get to a lot of where yeah. it seemed like Scrubs. Certainly, there was plot in Scrubs that moved faster than some of those sitcoms, though. Well, yeah, I was gonna say um, it seems like in Scrubs. Like, if you took a season, one season's 20 episodes, and it's like every three or four episodes, there's another plot. Like It there's pushes like, it forward, yeah. Yeah. So it's like... And it's usually things you don't expect when we watch the first time, at least. Yeah. It's like... Uh, but there's it's one there's, of those shows, too, though, that, like, you kind of get like, oh, shit, like, they're just going to throw another thing at me. Here it comes. Like, yeah. something you don't expect is just going to fucking... And right when shit's starting to look good... For JD, something goes wrong. That's just kind of like the formula that they use. Yeah. It seems like that whole show is just showing that... Um, there's always something bad that happens, but there's also good, you know? Like, there's a... It shows a balance, like a really good balance. And I like that. I do like that show a lot. I've only watched the entire series once, but, like... That was when we I did I watched it. the whole... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I drop in on it every once in a while. That's a show that I find when I rewatch it because I rewatch Scrubs probably once a year or twice a year. That's one of those shows where the first season is really hard to sit through because, like, South Park was like that though. I mean, I didn't like the first season too. Well, much. I think with South Park, it's because the show it dramatically changed between like one and two. Even but Sonny I, did though. Too, and Sonny like, did too, but they were like, Oh, let's put, let's put, let's put on entirely new character. And they basically pulled Frank in. Yeah. And they were like, Oh, well now the dynamics basically entirely different, but I think and they made D an actual character. Yeah. <laughs> I think with scrubs, it's the fact that the whole first season, it's a lot of slow, it's a lot of slow character development, which is good. Yeah. You but it's want like that in a way you want that. Like, yeah. Like but it's like the character, the way the characters were in season one 
That's they're only like that in season one. And then like you could take an episode from season two and season six and not be able to know. You yeah, know what I mean? Happens. It, it does happen though. Like it's kind of naturally like how it's gonna work. Like when you, I know fucking, that. No, yeah, I, yeah, it's tough though. Like as an actor, you gotta go. Well, you gotta. It takes you time to like you know get into your character and shit. And like Sunny, you could take an episode from season two and yeah. then an episode from season five. Yeah, it's totally and different. You, Not entirely us. D. It's it's less different than. Yeah, yeah. It seems like the first season of all of a lot of these shows, which is how TV works. I un- I understand that. Yeah. But I, I just think that a lot of shows start off so slow that when you go to rewatch them, it's even slower. Yeah. I just think there's a balance too, though. It's like there's shows that I've seen that'll go like right on their pilot. They'll just not really have much character development, but they'll just jump right in. I mean, like I don't know. There's it's a hard. That's a hard thing to do, really. I mean, like I, feel I, like, like I said, you gotta fucking know your character, and it takes a while to do that. I feel like Sonny did a great job starting the show off because that's the abortion episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, is it the first one? No, I'm the first positive. one is um, the gang gets racist. Oh yeah, where they like turn into a gay bar and shit. Yep. So even then, that really shows how fucked up they are. But like. I don't know. It's just, it's just when I rewatch Scrubs, I'm gonna skip season one. I guess is the whole point of this. Right. That '70s show was a show where, like, I felt like all the characters were exact, like right off the bat. They didn't really change too much. So it's I like to see that though. It, it no like, because like on one hand you got like maybe the actors aren't developing that much and it's part of the reason like Topher Grace left the show because he felt like he wasn't doing he was like just doing the same shit all the time but also you're like maybe they just nailed their characters right off the bat (laughs) I feel like the evolution of South Park's characters is one of the best in TV specifically when you look at Cartman and Randy Randy changed completely yeah and Cartman like the first four or five seasons was kind of just uh he was a main character, but he wasn't ever really the focus of any episodes. It was mostly Stan or Kyle. Well, they did a good job after a little while of going like, let's make an episode focused on this guy. Like, they'd have a Butters episode or like a Tweak episode or some random shit. Like, they did a good job at making those characters central pe- like parts of the show. Even Tolkien had an episode. It's like you, you can, they can basically just, they develop characters by putting the spotlight on them. And then when they show up in storylines down the road, even if it's just part, you sort of care about it a little bit more. Yeah. It's one of the things that, like... uh, I think those guys are fucking genius. Matt and Trey are so fucking good. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things I like about American Dad. Yeah. Where American Dad, the characters change as the show. Because, like, it seems like with Family Guy... Cause I like I like. Both I feel like shows. he the way he introduces is like his shit is just fast paced as fuck. Like his all of it, like McFarland, everything he does is fucking super fast, and it throws you right into the fucking situation right off the bat. Because I remember watching the premiere of American Dad, and they're just like, "Oh, hey, uh, my name is this, and this, and this, and this." Basically, they weren't like saying their names, but like each character basically was like the way they introduced the characters. It felt rushed. I don't know. I, that was just me when I watched the pilot like a month yeah. ago or so ago. Well, I think what I with Family Guy the characters get they get less complex. Yeah. But American Dad, they start off like super stereotypical and then as the show goes on, like Roger makes the show. Like Roger's the cheat code because he can be whatever character they need to be. Yeah, like that that's a formula that a lot of shows like to use. Because he can, they can just dress him up and fucking put him. It's in dude, it's it's fucking great. Like, but but Aqua Teen did that kind of shit too. Like they didn't yeah, use another character. That's every that episode. was a, because they could. They just had random guys. Yeah, and they could pull in like it was like having a podcast with a guest in every yeah. episode, and they just pull somebody in and make a character for him, and then it's only fifteen minutes long, so they could just fucking come up with some bullshit that didn't make any sense at all. Has no resolution whatsoever. <laughs> At the end, <laughs> yeah, someone, they all die. Someone dies. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I fucking love up. like the best episode with the with the like the best one off. Two of them. I love the one with the the Bible fruit. Yeah, 
That one's great. Get the get the cup. The drugs are in the, the cup. The drugs are in the cup. <laughs> then get the liquor faster. Yeah. I'm not going to dismantle the pipes and drink from the U-Trap. <laughs> <laughs> but that one and then the one where, where Carl is trying to sell the house and the robots move in. Yeah, yeah. That one's good, too. <laughs> like I like the mummy under the house, too. That one's a classic. <clears throat> oh, what, what's the... Hog! Curse! <laughs> what was the guy? Um, what the fuck was his name? It was the onion guy that always sh- that he kept shaving his head. Ha- shaving. Oh his- yeah, Harry. What the fuck was his name? Uh, Harry. I don't remember. Kenny Rogers. Didn't they- wasn't his name literally Kenny Rogers? It, I think it was. Yeah. yeah I, I remember Happy Time Harry with the doll with the fucking knife for a hand. Yeah. <laughs> He was in his boxers. <laughs> the fuck was his name? Willie Nelson. Yeah, Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson, the fucking onion spider thing. Yeah, but like yeah. the the entire time they're trying to talk. He's he's talking about how he's like super peaceful and doesn't like to scare people. But then he invites them up in the attic and he's just got fucking decapitated corpses. Yeah, everywhere. I don't know. This show's very silly. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, every episode had a fucking new character. It felt like. Like, I love, I love the episodes of American Dad where, like, they get meta about it. Where, like, there's an episode where Stan has to see a therapist, and he's like talking to Roger about all of his problems, and Roger's like, "Oh, I know just the guy you could talk to about your problems," and they like. He he walks Stan to the up, upper floor of the house, and Stan looks at me and goes, it's just going to be you in a costume, isn't it? And he's like, no, of course not. And he opens the door, and he the, the guy in the chair turns around, and it's Roger. And he's like, yeah, it is just me in a costume. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. Stuff like that is, is really funny to me. I, I just like, I don't know. It's, it's really funny when they explain Roger in one of the episodes, and he talks about how everybody has a disguise, or he... Everybody has a disguise that they don't recognize him in. Mm-hmm. So, like, one of the guys he dresses up as is, like, this this billionaire guy that's just... His whole purpose is just to just be an asshole to, fr- uh, to Stan. And everybody else knows it's Roger, but Stan thinks it's, like, this fucking billionaire mogul. Yeah. And it's fucking great. <laughs> it just makes no sense. Yeah. Because, like, you would obviously know this <laughs> Green, this fucking gray dude is not a human. Yeah, you know it's like <laughs> that's what's so funny about it. And like other people in the show don't know that he's an alien. Yeah, I don't know why that's so funny because it's such a stupid. That's the premise of why it's funny, but it's so simple. Yeah, that it makes it even funnier. I don't know. I I, I like the I simple, stupid, was, easily digestible. I feel like I feel like Stewie is like the parallel of that. Like that's what they use him for. Yeah. <clears throat> like the same sort of formula. It's I, weird. They do have like the two shows are kind of the same formula. <coughs> like it's weird. Like they all have kind of the same dynamic. The three shows, because Cleveland show was just like it. Yeah, it you is. have the you have the lovable oath of a dad. You have the mom. But that was the formula that like the Simpsons did. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was kind of the same thing. And then you had you know the Flintstones was the same thing. Yeah, in a way, yeah. The Simpsons is wild, man. That show is fucking just. It's. Like, I never. I never liked it. I never. I don't know why. Either. It's like I. I never liked it, but I never disliked it. Like, I never. I, I never had a problem with like watching it though. Like I just all put it on if it's on. It's not like hilarious or anything, but like it does a. It's got such. It's been on for so long, and it has like a consistent, like, fan base. People still watch it, so I mean, why not still fucking have it? <laughs> I really <laughs> if it think works, it's, it works. I think it's crazy that both of those shows, Family Guy and The Simpsons, are still on the air. I find it insane that. I mean, if you look at like The Simpsons, that literally that whole South Park episode that talks about like how The Simpsons have done everything, it's actually true. Yeah, they've done every plot line you can fucking possibly think of, and it's scary. <laughs> like it's it's kind of horrifying that they are able to do that. But they had the, the characters, like, the development. Like, Homer Simpson is, like, iconic. He's, like, just that American dude. Like, I don't know. They, they modeled him after, like, the, the typical American. But it's... it's 
What's the other show? Uh, isn't the same? Isn't the Futurama guy the same creator? Yeah, he did The Simpsons. Yeah, what the fuck's his Matt name? Matt Groening. Right? Yeah, yeah. Futurama. You can tell. Actually, I mean, now you, that I think about it, Futurama might be my favorite show. It's that's up there. It's definitely sure. up there. I think I like it. I think the reason I don't like it as much is because there's so many fucking episodes, and I don't. I can't. I don't know. Like it's hard there, to describe. Like I can't attach myself to it as much. It's if you ever sit down and rewatch Futurama, yeah. you're gonna be amazed by how many episodes you don't remember because Comedy yeah, Central yeah. only showed like they only 20. show certain ones. Yeah. So and like some of the best well, there's episodes, also a lot of them. Yeah, in there general. are. But some of the best episodes are the ones that never really got syndicated, right? Or they weren't. On I wonder how that works. Time. Yeah, like, do they pay for certain seasons or something like that? That's got to be how it works. It's where's the the Simpsons ratings only go to 2011. I don't know if they're still making new episodes or not. They have to, right? They are. That's got to be one of the longest running shows ever. Has to be. Um, the Simpsons. I mean, Monday Night Raw is like the like longest running show, just because they do it every week and they've done that for ever. Yeah. But the <laughs> thing is, it's not Monday Night Raw is it's episodic, but it's not because you can, they just do it live, and it's just it's fucking pro wrestling. Whereas with fucking, you have to literally write a storyline for fucking The Simpsons every week. That's a lot more work than just putting on a... I mean, I guess it's not, because realistically, a live show is probably more demanding, but their fucking storylines are certainly not as demanding as those that The Simpsons do. <laughs> like, yeah. Monday Night Raw storylines are pretty predictable and shit. Like, you know that someone's gonna betray somebody, somebody's gonna fucking... Cut a promo. Like, you know the formula. Sorry, I'm trying to... I'm into looking up what the Simpsons ratings are because I, I looked up Simpsons ratings and one thing said that the Simpsons got its best ratings in years and the other one said that it got its worst ratings of all time. Here we go, ratings. It's hard. Um, it's really not that bad. What's really crazy to me, because a lot of people talk about how the Simpsons is dying... But you're. Lo I'm looking at the the chart right now. That's what I mean. And they're averaging like like you got four million views, five million, three million, four, six, three, five, three, five, eight million, nine million. Yeah. Like people are and still watching it. Yeah, the network is gonna say keep doing it because they're still getting eyes. Like <laughs> literally, like it doesn't matter. Like the people say that shit, but they don't. I mean, you just have to look at the numbers, really. It's like even when people were talking about, uh, you know, fucking Monday Night Raw again. It's like when they were talking about how it was getting, it's getting lower ratings. Yeah, but it's still getting millions of fucking viewers, still making them shit tons of money. It's not in trouble by any stretch of the imagination. Like, like the Simpsons could fucking keep going for another fucking 15 years if they wanted to. And fucking, they might at this rate. <laughs> Realistically, I'm trying to think. What are? What do you think Monday Night Raw's ratings are? Uh, like it's over. It's over a million an episode, right? Yeah, I would say it's maybe two. It can't be any more than that now. I would imagine their storylines aren't that great right now, and they don't have much star power. I watched fucking the other day, and I was like. What the fuck did they do to, like, half of these characters? Like, they changed their theme songs and, like, their looks and shit. Like, Bailey doesn't even look the same anymore. Bailey has a different theme song. I saw that. That was really weird. She, and like, looks one, like a lesbian or some shit it's now. It's 1.3 million per yeah. episode. That's since, still good, but it's not what I expected. November. That's actually not that... That's not... I mean, that's people watching it live. That doesn't include people that stream it illegally, which I bet a lot of people do. Right. Um, Probably not... But I would say maybe you got a hunt. You got one and a half million viewers an episode, which isn't bad at all. No, that's still something you're gonna have. You're gonna want that shit on your network either way. And I imagine you also get 
you're not getting the ratings from like you said you're getting there's probably another 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 that are watching it streaming or on some other platform. But I know like a lot of these platforms now like you like YouTube TV or like Sling TV or whatever, mm-hmm. they'll they'll be part of the Nielsen rating. So even if you record something as like a DVR, yeah. that'll still part that'll still like add into their uh overall rating. Like Family Guy so the Simpsons basically averages like four million an episode. Family Guy is about the same. It's at three and a half million an episode. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Netflix is weird too with their ratings because they talk about how uh or from what I've heard they go by how many views you get in like the first three days or whatever, and then like how, how far it drops off. It, they look at it in like on a graph basically. And uh, they basically base how much they're going to pay you based on the consistency of people watching. So how how, how many days basically <coughs> people keep that high view count? Dude, all I know is one of my favorite Netflix-related things was about how Adam Sandler movies are the most watched thing on Netflix by yeah. a country mile. Yeah, of course it is. Like, I'll never forget when they released the data and they were saying that so many people watch Adam Sandler movies or any Adam Sandler production. It's as if every single American Netflix member watches one movie a month. Mm-hmm. So think about all the people. Which means they don't, first of all. But that all that also means someone is watching multiple Adam Sandler movies <laughs> like, a month. Yeah, maybe like weekly. Like a week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, and I it's mean, funny because his best movies aren't even on Netflix. Right. You don't have The Water Boy or The Wedding Singer or Little Nicky or Happy Gilmore Water Boy's or Daddy not or Happy uh, Billy Madison or Happy Water Boy, Billy. Mr. Deeds. Yeah, the Longest yeah. Yard's pretty good. Yeah. Click Billy is pretty good. Yards. Um, Punch Drunk Love was pretty good. Um, what's the sad one? Rain Over Me? Oh, I didn't see that one. It's probably too sad. Was that the 9-11 one where his family dies in 9-11? I don't know. And he's addicted to Shadow of the Colossus? I'm pretty sure that's the <laughs> plot of the movie. I'm pretty sure that's the plot of the movie where his his wife and kid die during the September 11th attacks. And he hangs out with like Danny Glover and plays Shadow of the Colossus. That's what I would do, right? Hang out with Danny It's like a buddy comedy. Yeah, that's for sure what I would do. You know what's a wicked good movie that actually is like one of the few Thanksgiving movies is uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That movie is wicked good. It's got Steve Martin. <clears throat> it's, oh my God, it's so fucking good. It's all about like, it's one of those old school movies where like, it's just him trying to get home in time for Thanksgiving dinner, but like shit always is constantly going wrong, like vacation or something, you know? I fucking love like the original one with Chevy Chase. Yeah, like where shit just always is going wrong for him. Nothing ever goes right, but he's somehow. But the thing is with Steve Martin, he like has a bad attitude about it. He's like always pissed about it. With vacation, it was like he was constantly optimistic. Like yeah, up until the very end. Yeah, when they get there and it's fucking closed. <laughs> yeah, and then he like pulls a gun on the guy yeah. on the security guard. Um. I like those. I love those fucking movies, though. Should probably wrap up soon. But yeah, I love those movies. Nobody ever talks about Steve Martin. It's pretty weird. Yeah. You you ever see Airplane? It's Leslie Nielsen. But that movie's a classic. It's a great movie. I might watch that when I get home. That's a wicked good fucking movie. Um, See No Evil, Hear No Evil is a wicked good movie, too. Isn't that the one with Kane? No, it's got. um, It's got. Oh my god, it's got a fucking handful of guys in it. John Leguizamo? So, the plot is actually fucking hilarious. I don't know why I'm blanking on the names. It's a comedy movie. Uh, Nick Kroll? It's got Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. And Gene Wilder plays uh, a deaf guy. And Richard Pryor plays a blind guy. Are you serious? <laughs> it's fucking, it's so good. Like, the dynamic is perfect. And they go through, like, this whole thing where, like, I don't know if it's, like, a jewel thief or some shit. Like, something gets stolen from him or something like that. 
And so basically like Gene Wilder is being like the eyes of Richard Pryor throughout the whole movie and <laughs> Richard Pryor is being the fucking like, you know, being the ears. But the way like the dynamic is and those two guys like are perfect for the fucking roles. That movie is like a movie that no one's really I feel like no one's seen that movie. That's fucking great. That was one of the funniest movies I've seen just cuz uh I felt like they nailed it like as far as their characters go. There's like some really funny scenes though. There's a scene where Richard Pryor uh, is, gets in a fist fight with a guy and he can't see. So Gene Wilder keeps telling him like where to punch and shit. <laughs> it's fucking so good. It's just fucking great. Um, I should check that movie out. It's but really also, good. dude, I completely forgot that Richard Pryor was dead for a second. I had to Google it and to remember. Yeah, he's for sure dead. He died like twelve years or fourteen years ago. Yeah, like a handful or so. For a split second, I thought Richard Pryor was still alive. That would have been cool. George Carlin's dead, too, and that sucks. Yeah. He was the guy that told jokes, right? So is Hitler. Yeah. But that that's not that bad. No. I'm glad he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about Eric Andre? <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> 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 That's it, right? What else we got? I'm surprised we did as long as we did. Yeah, I'm really tired, man. I'm going to go play Halo Reach. Halo Reach. Do you have to work tomorrow? Two o'clock. So you could, you could stay up till like fucking six. Yeah, till like one o'clock p.m., you know? <laughs> Basically. I really sleep for like a 15 minutes. <laughs> sleep for half a hour? Yeah, half a hour. When do you get out? Eight? Wait, what is that from? Where is it half a Half a hour? Yeah, I forget what that is. The news was half a hour long. Fucking Norm MacDonald. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, when I was a boy, you know, the news, you know, the news was half a hour half long. a hour long. Wow. Now the news is 24 hours long. And you know what? They had it right the first time. Half a hour is good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you got any, you got any we were dates any coming cool up? cool announcements? Do you have any? What's your socials? Give us your socials. <laughs> Um, any announcements? We're gonna take a break after we have this episode that comes out. Yeah, we are probably gonna take a break. We're gonna take a, a break. Weeks. Holidays <sighs> uh, for the holidays. We're gonna be work. So the week of the twenty fifth, and then the week of New Year's. Yeah. So basically, like the last week of December and the first week of January, we're gonna be taking a break because we're gonna be we're working a shit ton. We're crunching in some hours, and yeah, maybe we'll have some cool shit too. When like during those weeks, I'll come up with some shit to do. Like if we can manage to get somebody like Wes or Christian on, we should probably try and get them in. Fit it in, yeah. But get it in where you fit it in. You know, I'm not really itching to add podcast episodes on top of the holidays. I don't think people are going to want to listen to him anyway during the fucking holidays. You True. Know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Um, but, yeah, we'll see you next week, uh, I guess. Probably have somebody cool, you know. Somebody on. Dom, maybe. Zamaya. Oh, somebody cool. Mark. Somebody, somebody cool, you know. And we can watch The Simpsons with him. We can have Jake or like Danny. Simpsons uh, companions. You know what I mean? That'd be I like that this episode was literally about nothing. Yeah, most episodes are about nothing, though, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. But this one was, like, exclusively about it was nothing. really about nothing. Yeah, we didn't even talk about sports. We didn't talk about where you go when you die. The only thing I wanted to mention, I wanted to talk about Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, for like, for like a split second. But it really isn't anything we've never said before. But, like, we watched his, his tryout video before like we started, team, and he yeah. looked like... Dog shit. Yeah, his footwork is bad. And it's just like... His delivery is so long. <laughs> and this is the point that I was making to other people. Do, does, he des, does he deserve a job in the NFL? No, nobody deserves a job in the NFL. You work for it. Do I think he could earn one? Yeah. Probably. Do I think he's worth the media circus? No. Because whether you agree with him or not, 
you have to understand that he's going to just attract a ton of unwanted attention yeah. wherever he gets signed. And a lot of teams don't think it's going to be worth it. And that's pretty much... Or maybe they want the attention, right? That's what I'm thinking is like some team that's just fucking in the gutter right now that maybe needs some fucking attention. But I don't think it would be a big market team. I don't think the Jets would sign him. No. I think somebody like the Bengals would Cincinnati sign Cincinnati is what I was thinking. Or somebody like... Um, Pittsburgh. No. <laughs> I could see like Cincinnati signing him or think, maybe uh well every team it seems like almost every team has their quarterback thing figured out. That's what I was thinking the other day. It seems like they mostly like, basically every team has a quarterback that they're f- going to stick like with, committed right? to, yeah. Like the Jaguars the Giants are weird too cuz it's like they got Daniel Jones but like Eli Manning's just sitting on the bench and they're like committing to Daniel Jones. Even though he throws three interceptions a game, they're both really bad. Yeah, I still think you got to go with a veteran for a couple of years until he's ready to. Yeah, hang it up. Well, hang on. Who? I could see. I could see Cincinnati picking him up, and I really think that that's the Dolphins. Down it. What about the Dolphins? The Dolphins could. Because they can't. They ain't gonna run with run with Fitz. You know what I mean? You could run with Fitz as long as you want. It's fun the to watch. The Broncos could. Uh, doubt that. That's about it. Yeah, he's got slim slim chances is what we're saying. Like what team right now is the worst quarterback in the league? Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> What about the, uh, who else is in that division? The Redskins. Redskins, right? Don't they have, where's RG3? <laughs> he's on the He's on the Ravens, dude. I was going to say, I was like, who the, I saw RG3 playing the other day, I think, and I was like, wait a minute, how the fuck does that team have RG3? I forgot he existed. Yeah, he's uh, Lamar like Jackson's really... backup, and he plays really well when yeah. he's in, which is terrifying. That's... Like, he plays really well when he's in. Yeah, you know, for a backup, he's not like fucking you're gonna win on a yeah, six man of the year. Need is just a guy that's as good yeah. as RG three. That's a backup. Yeah, exactly. Like plus, um, he's got the same style as fucking Lamar uh, Jackson. Did, does. did Sam Bradford retire? <laughs> I don't know. He stopped doing <laughs> like, stuff, right? <laughs> like, is he on a team? I don't remember. The last thing I remember him doing was with, he was with the Rams, right? That's the last time I remember him playing. He might have played for, like, the Cardinals or some random shit. He did. Yeah, he was on the Cardinals. He was on the Cardinals last year, and he didn't... Uh, I feel like if he, he didn't played... play, he didn't play at all. Oh. He got injured in the preseason, and then he never played during the regular and season. he's just not... Do- he's done. And then they, they released him, because I remember... I feel like if you played for the Cardinals, like, they were, you're, I remember you're on when they made fun of him. They made fun of the Cardinals on Reddit, because... They paid Sam Bradford like eighteen million dollars, and he didn't even play a single snap for them. Cardinals are good at that, though. Yeah, like they're good at like getting guys too late and like having them do nothing for them. <laughs> right. Like, that makes me miss Carson Palmer because he was actually kicking ass with Arizona, dude. Right. Like Carson Palmer was so good for like the first two or three years he was in Cincinnati, and then his knee exploded, and yeah. then he was dog shit and then when he went back and he went to arizona he played really really well yeah. he was always a quarterback i like i like to root for yeah, he's like, just like a consistent guy well he was consistently not good also you know like when he, he was consistently when he was in oakland he wasn't that good yeah <laughs> oakland has that effect though it seems like for some reason yeah i want to see his stats but I just felt like I feel like uh, Arizona is like a good spot for guys who are like done, done, yeah, like literally just done. <laughs> it's a good spot for your career to die. Is there is there even a was there a stats page I can find for this shit? There it is. Go to ESPN.biz. I'm on Football Reference. Football dash reference. I'm trying to think of. Uh... Where the fu- how do I re- read this chart? There we go. Uh, Jesus, quarterbacks were so weird back then. Like in the mid two thousands, dude. Like eighteen interceptions, twenty interceptions. Yeah. Twenty two interceptions. Like what the fuck? 
They're forcing him, dude. They're forcing too like many he throws. played. He played for Arizona from 2013 to 17. He had a really good year. He one year, 35 touchdowns, 11 picks, 4,700 yards. There is there even a guy like that in the league right now? Like just a completely average. Like is that Kirk Cousins now? He's he's a it lot. Could be Kirk or like. Well, I guess Fitz. Tannehill is playing really well right now, though, for real. Tannehill is finally having his breakout season. He's like he's got fourteen touchdowns, two picks. He's leading the league in passer rating and completion percentage. And he's and he's the Titans are winning games. Yeah, they're a team that might sneak up. It's weird. You could you still have time. Like that's what's so fucking the whole playoff picture is wild looking. There's right now. four more games left. Yeah. It's so fucked up that Dallas is 500 and they're still in the fucking driver's seat. <laughs> like, it's All so they have, weird. They literally only have to win. They're they six have, and six. They literally have to win three games. They've lost to, like, they've lost tough games, though. It's fucked. Like, I feel like they're better than this, a six and six. Well, it comes down to. Division, their division's it, weak. Well, it's not even. It's, it is that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it is also it's the Cowboys, and people like to see them fail. Because nobody was complaining when Seattle went 7-9 and nine and won the division. Because they were all just like, oh, all these teams are shit. Right. So, But for some reason, the Eagles and Cowboys, every year, everybody expects them to be like 12-win teams. Like, I remember people in the beginning of the season, one of the, I think it was ESPN, one of their power ranking lists had the Cowboys and Eagles as, like, number two and three. Yeah. And then the Patriots were number one, and it's like... It doesn't make any sense. No, because the Cowboys probably weren't even a top-five team at the end of last year. Yeah, I mean, but also, like, who had the Ravens being, like, the best team in football? No, I'm just saying it's every year Philadelphia and Dallas are expected to be good because they're the most. They're yeah, two of the most popular I teams. Guess. It's just weird even thinking you can predict any of these seasons. It's fucked. But what I'm getting at is that <laughs> you just, I feel like you're just doing this to fuck with me. No, what I'm getting at is that it's a bigger deal when it happens to Dallas or, or an NFC East team. I guess it would be, I guess, yeah. You know what I mean? Mostly because like, their fan base is big. Is really the only like reason. if if it was if it was reversed, right? And Green Bay was six and six and first in their division. Nobody would be, people would be like, oh, the whole NFC North is dog shit. But instead, people are saying like, oh, wow, the Cowboys are lucky. You know what I mean? It's the tone. But that's just the way it is. You have it with Dallas. You get it with Los Angeles Lakers. You get it with the Yankees, where it's like the teams that everybody talks about. When they're bad, it's their fault. And when they're good, they're lucky. You know what I mean? It's because they're talking, they're better talking points just because they're bigger fucking bases. Yeah. It's really just, it I don't know. It's like, of course they're going to make a bigger deal out of it because there's more people that are paying attention to that team. It is That's what it seems like to me. Because if you got a bigger fan base, obviously you got more people fucking paying attention to it. I just, They like I, to rile up fans, too. I, I, yeah, exactly. And I hate that every year the preseason rankings, first off, they're dog shit anyway, but it's, yeah, it's like why. there's no reason why even the most optimistic Cowboys fan – didn't think the Cowboys were the second best team in the league going into the season. I don't know why that. I don't know how you could possibly. It's like, I don't know. I guess that's why I don't watch sports media. Like, I don't know why you could, how you could possibly get. I wonder how many people have ever gotten preseason rankings, like, correct. Like, have those rankings be accurate at the end of the year. Well, it's funny. Like, look at. Probably 0%. Look at, like, NCAA football or basketball rankings. Yeah. Well, even, like, just. Playoffs, college football playoffs. You can't predict that shit anyway. You can't predict sports in general. And I think the NFL is great because of the fact that like all the teams feel like <coughs> it's like any week you could fucking lose to this fucking team. Like I know the Dallas and the Chargers are in weird fucking spots because they play games where they they could win this game and they lose by small margins. And the Chargers have to, like, the Chargers fucking lose games that they should win, probably. But they lose a lot of fucking games yeah, that are close. Yeah, Phillip Rivers is just bad now. That's the problem. 
I guess, but I feel like they have n- no business having as many losses as they do. Well, if Phillip Rivers wasn't as bad, they probably wouldn't. <laughs> no, I think it's literally like three games, like three losses in a row, he's thrown a pick on a potential game-winning drive. Yeah. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure that's real. That's the glove. Like, peop- like people are ignoring Phillip Rivers doing what everybody said Tony Romo did. Like... <laughs> You know what I mean? And it brings us back to the point. It's because it was Dallas. Yeah, because, yeah, and fucking no one pays attention to the Chargers. No. They don't even have a home. Pretty sure more people watch the the Los Angeles WNBA team than the Chargers. Maybe, yeah. What's their team called again? The Sparks? The LA Sparks? That sounds right. Tornadoes. Yeah. <laughs> the Hawks. The LA, the LA Diuretics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, the L.A. door knockers. No, the, I think <laughs> da- <laughs> Dallas's issue this year is that they're not that good. That's literally it. Like they that could beat, be part of the problem. They beat bad teams and they lose to good teams. Right. And then they also beat good teams and lose to bad teams. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you know, like they don't, but they're not convincing in any, in one way or the other. They, they're like, they don't really. They haven't had a statement game, is what it really is. No, comes the, down the, to. the, like the four, four of their wins that they have that were like big wins were either against division p- opponents, which the division's dog they're shit not this big year. Big wins in that division, really. And, you know, it's, it's the fucking Giants, Redskins, and the Dolphins were like, they're three big wins, and then they lose to the Jets. Yeah. Which was hilarious. That's way hilarious. How do you even do that? That's hard to do. You know, and then they lose to the Packers, which was a, cl- they, they they were getting blown out that game, right? Wasn't it like 24 to nothing? And, and then a- they lost by a touchdown. Yeah. The Packers like to make games closer than they should be. Who they else like they to score to? a bunch of points and then they're like, yeah, well, it's fourth quarter. Let's just yeah. sit on it. <laughs> Didn't they... I don't even remember who Dallas has played this year. I barely watched any football. Just a whole bunch of different dudes, you know. They played Buffalo. Did they play Carolina? No, but they, so I, they played that division, right? They played Buffalo's division. So they played the Jets. So they lost the Patriots. They lost the Bills. Patriots, they lost yeah. the Vikings. They beat the Lions, which I don't even remember that game happening. The Lions are not great. No. They're like three, eight, and one or some shit. Yeah. Or four, eight, and one. They lost the Jets, the Packers, the Saints. I don't remember the Saints game either. Mm, I don't remember that either. Like, I remember the first game of the season was the Giants because I watched that with my dad, and I really don't think. I don't think I've sat and watched a whole game since. I watched the Eagles game where they won 37 to 10. But the Eagles aren't that good. They're really bad, honestly. No. The Vikings, I, I don't know what the fuck the Vikings are. Are the Vikings good? They're good, yeah. They're a game behind us. The Bills are really fucking good. The Patriots are the Patriots. I mean, the, the, they play the Bears this week. Are they going to beat the Bears? I don't... They're both 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Bears are not great. And they're playing in Chicago. Yeah, the Bears are probably... Well, no... The Bears are the Bears are three point underdogs in Chicago. The Bears are in the hunt too. It's weird. They're like uh, they're one of those outside looking in teams. They're like five and seven or some random shit. Like they're six and six. Oh, they are. Mm hmm. But the yeah. Bears are gonna get. They're not gonna make the playoffs if the Vikings keep it up. No, they aren't. Well, they could get a wild card spot still, right? No, because San Francisco and Seattle. Oh yeah, shit. Both of those teams are already going to Seattle finish. just took the division <laughs> last night with that win cuz San Fran lost. Right? I mean, they're first place, but they didn't lock it up yet. I know, but they took first and yeah. San Fran's been in first the whole year. The <coughs> and the Rams are 7 and 5. I don't even I mean, the Cowboys have the Bears, Rams, Rams. Eagles and Redskins. I think if they can beat the Bears, the Rams can make a run. They're in a good spot, I think. Seven I think wins. I think they'll beat the Bears. I think they'll beat the Rams, and I think they'll beat the Redskins. The Rams game is the only one I'd be worried about there. I don't think the Rams are that good. They they got seven wins. I think if they fucking shape up, they can make a run. I mean, they've lost to the Ravens, which they're going to. But they got 
yeah, but destroyed the lost, by the Ravens. The Saints lost to the Ravens. Or the, oh, I'm thinking of the Falcons. Yeah. <clears throat> but the Ravens, fucking no one's beating the Ravens. Jesus Christ. They're so goddamn good right now. But they lost to the Steelers. They lost to Tampa Bay. And then they've lost to Seattle and San Fran. Right. So they've lost to three good teams and two bad teams. Where the Cowboys have lost to three good teams and three bad teams. So they're basically the same. Well, actually, when you think about it, the, the Cowboys team. the Cowboys have lost, besides the Jets, all the teams they've lost to are going to be in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. They, they, it's just they lose to those. They lose to those teams, and the problem is that they haven't beaten any of those teams like to make an actual statement. Yeah, and they, they, that's the reason. It's like they've and I, what, like I said, I think they've fucking lost a bunch of games that they probably could have won. I think they're better than six and six. Is all I'm trying to say. I think they could fucking potentially do something. They should have beaten. They could have beaten the Patriots. I actually, I watched the Patriots game. Buffalo should have beat the Patriots. The problem with the Patriots game was those fucking, that trip. I mean, I'm not going to blame the refs. It was the tripping call. But that tripping call was fucking bullshit. Yeah, it was. And then that that no catch with uh, Cooper was fucking bullshit. Because I've seen that be called a catch a hundred times. I don't remember that one. All I remember is the fucking tripping. He caught it and, and landed on his chest. And then as he was rolling to gain possession, he juggled it for like half a second. Not even. Like he landed on his chest. So they were said that like the ground caused the, like it the ground knocked it loose. Yeah. But it like it was still in his hands the whole time. It just moved while he was holding on it's to so it. So weird. Because I've seen guys shit. go down low and trap the ball on the ground and have it still be a fucking catch. Like I don't understand what the fucking ruling is ever. It's so frustrating. Like and with an interception, they can do that and have it hit the ground. And it doesn't matter. Like, it's still considered an interception. Like, the possession rules aren't the same for defensive players. Dude, it is so... Fr- like, I'm just glad that NFL referees aren't as bad as NBA referees because the NBA is unwatchable right now. Yeah, well... You get guys like James Harden shooting, like, 20 free throws a game. That's why he's averaging <laughs> 40 points a game because yeah, you're he's at the shooting line. 20 free throws a You're game. at the line like fucking every 13 seconds. It's fucking pathetic. Because it's just you go for a fucking... Uh, they just drive the fucking lane and chances are the guy's not going to have his feet set and you're just going to well, draw a foul. The, the, it was a new rule last year where if a player's in a shooting motion... Any contact is an automatic foul. Until he hits the ground. Yeah. yeah. But what some players do, like James Harden, is when they shoot, they shoot and lean forward. Right. And if they to bump into contact. somebody, it counts. Yeah. They shoot themselves into fouls. And it's just, dude, it's I just so felt ugly. like the game was fucked because like, as soon as they got into this aggressive, like where you drive to the basket sort of thing, it's like you can draw fouls so easy just because the guy isn't set. Because the defender isn't set. Yeah. So it's not a charge. So like you can just drive really hard every fucking time. As long as they're not set, you fucking, you're going to get two shots or you get three point, a three point fucking play. Like it's like, but everybody does that now. Like all those forwards, like those big forwards can just do that because they're strong. And that was always like a part of the game. But I think, yeah, the part that sucks is that now it's way easier to get fouls. Yeah. There's no like... I was just talking to one of my coworkers about this because we were talking about, uh, he was telling me, he was reading this article about how NBA ratings have dropped by like 23% in the, since last, since the beginning of last season. Yeah. They're 23%. And one argument people have is, well, a lot of the NBA fans stream it. So what? You're not going to lose a quarter of your viewer base yeah probably not overnight like over the course of a year it made me completely forget about the hong kong and china thing because that's totally a reason why they're losing ratings because nba games are being blacked out in china over the hong kong protests which is hilarious yeah that's true but um and and okay so he was pointing out that and then he was pointing out how the mlb and the nfl ratings have been going up Consistently, which I didn't, I wouldn't have expected that with baseball 
but apparently baseball ratings have been going like slightly. They've been getting slightly better the past few years. Yeah, baseball offenses are getting better too. Though. And and NFL ratings somehow like somehow the NFL gets bigger every year. I don't get it. Yeah, You'd you think it think, would be fine where it is. <laughs> you would think that they got like enough people, you know, like and when like I feel like anybody who watches football, like who is starting to watch football is what I'm trying to figure out. Like Right. Like who's new just to football? Ra- just randoms. You know? Just like casuals. Right. Cause it's like uh the people that I, watch I, on Thanksgiving. You it's know? been I I think we were reading that it's like four times this year has been the most watched football game ever. Like four times it's been broken. Like the the Bills Cowboys game was just the most watched Thanksgiving game. Like twenty eight million viewers. Well it was right at four or whatever, like when everybody And eats. the Cowboys were losing. Yeah. To also, the Bills. it's when everybody fucking eats Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, or they just finished it or whatever. That's usually, I don't know, people for some reason eat Thanksgiving dinner in the afternoon and then they're hungry four hours later, but <laughs> it right. was right in that time slot, which is, it's not the number of people that are watching it though, because you can't know that there's seven people watching the same TV. So, you know what I mean? Like you're only getting the rating from the TV that's playing the game. They don't know that there's seven people watching. So it could have been more than 28 million. Yeah. Or less. But that's the number we're going to go with. the TV's just on and people aren't watching it. Right. (laughs) Obviously, yes. (laughs) It's fucking every time I make a point, you're like, it's like not even substantial. (laughs) Like you're just, (laughs) it's not. You're just, you're just like, yeah, but. This is why it's like. No, I'm just saying it could be a higher number, or a lower number. Well, it's most likely a higher number, I would imagine. I don't know, man. right? Well, I think it's. There's probably more but, people like, watching. I'm, I'm just saying, the same like, TV. It's, it's like you said, who is new to football? Yeah. Like, how are they getting more viewers every year? It's partially because of that, though. Like, it's Thanksgiving. There's a bunch of people watching it that don't usually watch it. it could be just an inflated number because of that. They do like Thanksgiving. Like the reason they do Thanksgiving games is just to get eyes on it. But it's like I don't know. You're not going to watch football unless you want to watch football. Well, there was like they started the Thanksgiving games back in the day because they wanted to have football games played during a holiday, and they figured Thanksgiving was yeah. unique enough because what else is on during Thanksgiving? Yeah, there was like a team that did it, and then like the Cowboys were the first team. Uh, I think there was a team before them, and then Dallas did it. Well, there was the Cowboys and the Lions, but they yeah. were the first ones. Like when they did it, there wasn't none of the other teams wanted to do it the next year, right? Because it was just it was the Lions on at, at one and the Cowboys on at four. Yeah, and then the next year they sold none it of the, the teams. Out, none of the teams wanted to do it, so yeah, and then the they Lions, sold it the fuck out, and then the Cowboys won that game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Against the Lions. Was it against the Lions? No. All I, I remember is that so. who, the first time they hosted it, they fucking won the game, and I think that probably helped a lot, too. Well, <laughs> part of it was it. the fact that neither of those teams <laughs> wanted to play on Thanksgiving. So what they were going to do, actually it might have been Lions versus Dallas, but what they, what they were going to do was have two different teams play. Right. Just have one game on for Thanksgiving. But none of the other teams wanted to do it. So what they would do is have Dallas and Detroit Thursday. play because the problem is you get an extra Thursday game is what sucks. And they didn't do Thursday games back then. Right. Now we get them every week anyway. Yeah. I don't know. There's a whole story about it. But basically, from this is how it happened. The Cowboys and Lions did Thanksgiving. None of the other teams wanted to do it. So the NFL basically gave them Thanksgiving every year. And then when it started to blow up and Thanksgiving football became a thing, then they added the third game because other teams wanted to do it. And Jerry Jones and uh, Mr. Ford, I don't know what his first name is, refused to give up their Thanksgiving slots. Right. That's why they're the only teams that do it. Packers and the Giants are the other two teams that have played the most Thanksgiving games, is what I was reading. Yeah. Besides, like, the Lions and the Cowboys. 
Which is weird. Like I don't know why that would just be. The well, case. it's probably they probably, probably had a lot of divisional. Yeah, I was gonna say they probably had a lot of Lions Packers. Probably honestly, a lot of Packers Cowboys games too, and Giants yeah, Packers because yeah. I feel like the Giants and Packers was a thing in like the nineties. And Cowboys and Packers for sure was. Yeah. And you know who doesn't want to see the Lions and the Giants? You know, <laughs> I think it's really funny. Like, <laughs> it's it's funny that the Lions are one of the teams for Thanksgiving because they're. So bad, like historically. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what are you talking about, dude? They're like three, eight, and one, dude. They're they're pretty good. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I've talked to people about the whole Thanksgiving thing, and they hate the fact that the Cowboys get a Thanksgiving game every year. And it's like, well, back then they were the only team, one of the only teams that did it. Was so they get to it. Do it. Yeah. That's what it is. You know. I mean, I guess that's what it is. Thanksgiving football used to be my favorite time of year, and it was absolutely ruined this year. The Bills, dude, they fucked you over. Dude, my favorite Thanksgiving football game was when they played the Raiders a few years ago. That was the good one. I don't remember. Because, I, no, I remember the rate. If I remember correctly, the Raiders were doing pretty good at the moment, which is surprising. It was when Derek Carr was having, like, his MVP year. Where he yeah, was like he was second or third in voting. And they played in Dallas for Thanksgiving. And it was tight the whole game. And like the last five minutes, I'm pretty sure Dallas scored like two two or three touchdowns and just dismantled them. I got to find that now. That's how it works, dude. They kicked the onside kicks. That was the big thing this year with the Saints and Falcons. <clears throat> it would have been wild if the fucking Falcons beat the Saints again. <laughs> <laughs> like the Falcons are not that great and the Saints already got annihilated by the Falcons this year. The I was reading somewhere that like I guess the Falcons had as many sacks in that Saints game as they had all season. <laughs> like so they basically like tripled their like uh like normal production like sack production. Because I guess it was like they had 14 all year, or not 14, I don't remember what it was, fucking eight or some shit all year. Mm -hmm. And they had like 12 sacks in that game or some stupid, ridiculous stat. I don't know if that's what it was, but it was fucking a ridiculous amount of sacks. And I don't understand what that's all about. Like, how the fuck do the Saints shit the bed that hard in that game? There's a couple games where teams that are really good have shit the bed. So I was totally wrong. I'm thinking of a completely different game. It wasn't the fucking... It wasn't the Raiders game because the Raiders didn't even have Derek Carr. Was it like 17 or something? <coughs> I'm, trying uh, to, I'm trying to see. You're never going to find it. Well, what the fuck? Ugh, who knows anymore? I don't even know what year it is anymore. I gotta play. I gotta play that Captain Crunch game tonight. I should do a clear shots plays of the Captain Crunch game. That'd be sick. <laughs> Crunchling adventure, dude. I miss when you got um, games in cereal boxes. Yeah, cool shit in cereal boxes. They don't even do that anymore. It's fucked. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what the. So in 1966, that's the one. The Cowboys adopted the Thanksgiving games, and they sought out a guarantee. Uh, I think there was a video on. They literally, they literally wanted to do it because there wasn't any football on. And then they got the Lions to join them because the, the Lions thought it was a good idea. And all the other teams thought they were retarded. The, Ly- the Cowboys proposed to skip the Sunday game and instead have the week be played on Thanksgiving. And all the other teams laughed at them. This is totally fucking paraphrased. But all the other teams laughed at them except for Detroit. So now Why didn't they sent- just move Thanksgiving to Sunday? <laughs> so everybody can watch football It's actually a wicked good idea um, And I didn't even know this But they didn't add the third Thanksgiving game Until 2006 
I feel like it was way. <sighs> no, I guess that's right. Because I don't remember there being an early game. Like it was like only a three o'clock or four o'clock game and then the night game. I don't think there was a one o'clock slot. Until yeah. 06. And then Fox and CBS both had that deal. So I guess what how it works is like Fox. Fox gets, gets the primetime game, game and then and then the year, year after yeah. it switches. The butt fumble happened on a Thanksgiving game. I yeah. completely forgot about that. That's awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That was pretty sick. It's always good when you run into your offensive lineman and then drop the ball. <clears throat> I'm trying to see which Thanksgiving game it was because I'm still on that shit. Yeah, I got to find it. <laughs> They actually played the Raiders twice since I've been a kid. Okay, I do remember the Jets one when I was younger. They beat the Jets 34-3 to on Thanksgiving. That was a good year. Yeah, Last year they beat the Redskins. That's how you know if your year was good or not. You know? I don't know. Fucking football, dude. I've been a football fan for so long, and I don't remember jack shit. I don't remember jack shit. I remember... <clears throat> Tragedy. Yeah. I remember. I only I, remember like losing. I remember. I, I only remember losing to Green Bay. Yeah. I only remember like losing NFC championship games, you know. <laughs> I remember losing to Aaron Rodgers when he threw the ball to Jared Cook. Yeah. And I remember oh, yeah, the, Des, the Des catch, no catch. Slash, the actual reason they lost was because of the DeMarco Murray fumble, but nobody mentions that. No, because everybody wants to blame the referees instead. Yeah. And then I remember the the year the Cowboys... The Cowboys were literally... They were the they were 14-2, and two and they were second in... This, it was the year that uh, the Patriots went undefeated. The Cowboys went 14-2, and two, and the Giants fucking strolled into Dallas and won by like fucking 17 when they were 9 and 7 and they won the Super Bowl that year. I also remember um the year when uh they beat they beat the Eagles in the wild card round by like fucking 20 and then they lost to Brett Favre and the Vikings like 31 to 3. Oh yeah. That was the Bounty Gate season when the Saints won the Super Bowl. But I remember the Cowboys were wicked good that year. They were like 12-4. and four. They destroyed the Eagles in the wild card round and then lose by 30 to Brett Favre. Shit happens. Like, like it was crazy because I remember Brett Favre threw for like 350 yards and four touchdowns. And then the next week against the Saints absolutely laid an egg. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. They lost like 31-10. to 10. Well, that's what I mean though. It's like teams can just... Suck nuts Dude, sometimes. Dude, I fucking hated that. I just once, I once, like, you've got to see Green Bay win a Super Bowl twice since you've been alive. Technically. Well, yeah, so 31 was, one was 31. I wasn't paying attention to football when that happened, though. The only one I really watched was Super Bowl 45. When fucking you know with Rogers, <clears throat> but they've won twice in you know that decade or whatever. Well, I guess it was more than ten years, but still. I mean, the good thing is that I got to see the Yankees win a World Series, and you'll never see the Angels win a World Series. They won in ninety six, seven. The Angels? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Early nineties. Are you sure? I don't think they ever did. I think you're thinking thinking of the Braves. No. You're thinking of the Atlanta Braves, dude. No. The Anaheim Angels of of Los Anaheim? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anaheim Angels of Los Anaheim. They have one World Series. They won in 2002. Yeah, 2002. That's right. I don't even remember that. Um, Who the fuck was it? Was Vlad Guerrero on the team? No, they had they had salmon. Uh, I don't think Vlad Guerrero was there. That was just before. It's weird. They've had like decent guys ever since then too. Dude, I didn't like, even know the Angels were around in two thousand two. Yeah, that was like the. <laughs> yeah, 
That was where it all culminated in O2. <clears throat> Who the fuck was on their team, man? Roster. Jeez. Kevin Kevin Appier. Timmy Mickey Salmon. Calloway. It was literally just Timmy Salmon, dude. John Lackey. Oh, yeah, Lackey was fucking incredible. Uh, Jose Molina. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was good. Clay Bellinger. Oh, my God. I remember that guy. Yeah, decent guys. It was like... um, Garrett Anderson. Tim Salmon. Tim Salmon carried the team, really. It was where it was. It's funny because we went I've never even heard of that guy. It's funny because we went from Tim Salmon to Mike Trout. (laughs) We're just fish guys, I guess. (laughs) They just like fish. Go fish. Go yeah. fish. Go. They're fish. like they're like scanning through like the draft order. They're like anybody who has a fish name, we're drafting this motherfucker. <clears throat> That's like the general idea. They should rename their fucking team to the fish. I don't know why there's no fish. It's funny because their name they're they're named after the city of angels, but they don't play in Los Angeles. Like they should just be called the California Angels. I feel like. I don't know why they don't go back to that. They're talking about doing it, though. They're talking about getting a new uniform and, like, changing it to Anaheim or something like that. I think they should. It's fucking stupid. It's like the fucking Giants and the Jets playing in the Meadowlands. It's like you're not a New York team. Like, I don't know. It fucks with me. There's a couple of teams that do that, though. And then uh, now we got two teams going to fucking L.A., which is dumb as shit. And then the Raiders going to Vegas. Like, what the fuck is going on? Does anybody give a fuck about football, specifically the Raiders, in Las Vegas? Do they care? I think, no, well, yes. I think Las Vegas is... I think is, it's a betting thing. Like, it's a... Well, they're the Raiders. Yeah. And... The thing is, is that, and I, I was, think that I, makes more sense than fucking like the Chargers going to fucking L.A. I think the Rams going to L.A. is so, like, well, I I would rather see the Chargers go to L.A. than the Rams. I would rather the Rams stay in St. Louis because we got enough fucking California teams. <laughs> How many do we need? True. Well, <laughs> I was reading there were these people online talking about how. The Raiders being in Vegas is actually cheaper for Raider fans to go to games. I think that makes sense. Because it's better, like, that you can make an event out of it. You can go to Vegas on Friday, hang out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, watch the Raiders game, and then go home Sunday night. Yeah. And it's the Raiders. Like, there's there's something mythical about the Oakland Raiders. And there's something extremely crazy to me about the fact that they're going to be playing in Sin City. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It does seem like And it. they have some of the best fans in the league. They could play in fucking Providence, Rhode Island and still have the Black Hole show up. You know what I mean? Yeah, they should. <laughs> the Providence Raiders. The Rhode Island Raiders. That Rhode sounds Island great. Raiders, yeah. It actually does. <sighs> All right, let's wrap it up. The Road Raiders, dude. I'm done. I want to go home and take a shit mm. on my own toilet, on my own time, that's, on my own dime. That's what happens when you eat 10 tacos. I might go to Taco Bell. Yeah, I want to drink some orange juice when I go home. <laughs> you need the antioxidants. Uh, <laughs> so if you uh, don't like football... Turn it off 20 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> no, probably like 40 Disclaimer. minutes ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're still listening, thanks. And uh, go whoever your football team is, <laughs> unless you're playing against uh, the Packers. Um, we'll see you next week. Uh, we're coming up to on, the, on the fucking holidays. We're coming up on the holidays. Y'all got to get your shoppings done, you know, <laughs> get your shopping done. And then, uh, like we said earlier, we'll probably take a couple weeks off uh, when the holidays come. Uh, we have something cool that we're going to announce pretty soon. We haven't really established when we're doing that, but we got something cool. It's all set up. Oh, up hey, we part. also we got to talk to Dave. Oh, we do have to talk to Dave. Why? What because Anabasis is starting a podcast. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and forgot about that. We should talk to them. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> I think the exact thing we should do is definitely talk to Dave. We should definitely talk to Dave. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we got a sound. 100%. My Dave's, every impression I do ends up like Norm MacDonald. Yeah, you know, uh, we uh, you know uh, we today, gotta uh, go down. Today. We gotta go down to, you know, <laughs> down the street over there, you know, and uh, talk to Dave and the boys, you know, and see yeah. if we can't get on that an Abasis show, you know, <laughs> Abasis. Yeah, all you gotta do is talk with a little bit of an inflection and add, <laughs> add a couple of you knows in there, and you know, you and you're know. Norm Macdonald, you know, <laughs> and then if you talk exactly like this, you could be Norm Macdonald trying to be Dave, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's true. You could, do you know, both characters at once. But yeah, we got some cool shit coming, and uh, we need money. So buy some of our shirts. Yeah, we need money. Help! <laughs> Help I need us. somebody. All right, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. ClearShotsPodcast.com is where you'll find links to everything we do. You can check us out on Twitter at ClearShotsPod. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and check us out in Periscope for live videos. If you have anything you want to ask us, send us an email at clearshotspodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time.